to Good morning. Uh, SJ has just uttered the immortal words. It's a long minute, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> she gives us our countdown and that was the longest minute ever. I know, you get to be quiet Honestly. for a whole minute. It's terrible. Honestly. <laughs> anyway, good morning and welcome. Welcome to Natasha Makes. She's not here today, um, but we are. We it's are. Stitchy Witchy Wednesday, which means I'm here with you. My name's Gemma and this here is our Stitchy Witch, Jane. Hello. Jane, I've got a frog in my throat. Listen to me, I sound all croaky. I know, I think there's something I going crowned. I think crowned. I'm going to have a little... Yeah, I no, it's just I haven't had a brew yet. Yes. Excuse me, everyone. You talk amongst yourself. Have a slurp <laughs> first. <laughs> How are you, Jane? I'm very well, thank you. Yes, good. You had a day off yesterday. I did. We let her out, everybody. What did you do? We went to Wales in the rain. Oh, casual. Mind you, it's not that far to Wales from your house, is it, really? No, because we're out on the Shropshire <clears> border, <throat> so we just nip through Shropshire and then we're there. Nice. It was in the rain. Yes, but That's it was very right. nice. Very nice. Just a day away, which was lovely. Nice. With your lovely husband. Yes. Mm. Spent some time with Glenn, which we I don't get to do that. very often at the moment. Well, no, quite. Shifts and all that malarkey. Yes. I know. So, yeah, it was lovely. Oh, well, that's good. Um, and now we're here. We're here. And, and it's, it's Wednesday again. Memory. Yes. It's Wednesday <laughs> Having again. Having a day off. And it's October. How I did know. that happen? Seriously, I did this thing where I went, oh, that's it now. It's October, which means it's basically Christmas. Yes. I mean, like, I don't know about everyone else. But once Harvest Festival's done. Yes. I'm like, it, it, it will roll around Halloween, Christmas, done. Yeah. yeah. Halloween Josh's birthday Christmas. is yeah. 19th of October. Once that's over, that's it. Countdown to Christmas. Yeah. Oh, I have, I have something to mention today. I don't know whether I'm taller here <laughs> or taller here. No, no, maybe I am a bit shorter today. I haven't shrunk. There we go. Um, I've got a lovely stool courtesy of Auntie Lizzie. Yes. I mean, it is supposed to be there for when you're serving Sewing. to lean on a bit. Yeah. But I'm not great today. So no. you went... Yeah, you need a greater Gemma. Gemma. You have it, Gems. <laughs> Which is marvellous. Thank you very much, Auntie Lizzie. Yes. Um, we ought to see if everyone's around, actually, Jane. We've been very rude, gassing on and not saying hello. I hope that somebody is watching. Well, you know, you know, might to be talking Nothing to ourselves. Nothing new, talking to myself. It's fine. <laughs> you do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, we both do. We both do. Or at least you know you're getting a conversation you can get on board with yes. when you talk to yourself. Let's say I get an intelligent answer. Now, let's have a look. Let's go into my live video viewer page is it coming do you know everything's on a go slow it. today i think everything's feeling like i am just a little bit oh. i start to feel like we need to hibernate i think i think there's a primal need to hibernate mm. oh i really think there is and comfort a, food absolutely oh gosh Stews and oh mashed potato <laughs> i think a lot of people <laughs> know that i i suffer from chronic fatigue and i've got fibromyalgia and i had four days straight where i just really struggled to get clothes on even mm. I was in my pajamas for most of it and I just feel like I'm wading through treacle when I'm like that it's really not fun but lovely Vicky my friend lovely Vicky yeah um spoke to me on the phone and she went mmm yeah this doesn't sound great this was Saturday and she said I've got a beef bourguignon in the slow cooker and I'm doing a crumble I said so you oh. and Guy just come over and I'll do you a tea and oh I'm how sorry. lovely <laughs> oh that's so the sort nice. of phrase you need isn't it I went round in leggings and a hoodie <laughs> Not caring what I looked like. And she wouldn't care either. No, I popped to the shop and got custard and ice cream because she could have a choice. Yes. And, um, and yeah, she did mashed potatoes and cabbage and oh, Ooh, it's just so lovely. nice. So nice. Definitely the sort of friend you need when you're feeling like that. Yeah, and just it's that time of year, isn't it, where yeah. you just want those comfort foods. Absolutely. Jane, you know, we've done it again. It's three minutes past ten and we're, we're talking, talking about food, food already. Already. It is Big Bat Wednesday, though, so it's only fair that we do this <laughs> on a Big Bat Wednesday. We do have viewers, Jane. That's the good news. Oh, that's good I to mean, know. otherwise, we'll just stand here and chat we'll sit here and chat about food. Um, just we a normal have work day. Martin says, good morning. And Jenny says, morning, Jane and Gemma. Uh, good morning, Jane and Gemma. Loving the quilt, says Donna. Hello, everyone from Breezy Berkshire, says Jane Vivash. What have we got here? Oh, lovely Vicky, who made me the beef bourguignon and the oh, crumble. Uh, good morning, ladies. Listening in while working today, we won't tell. Jimmy's with us. We'll keep our voices down. <laughs> yeah. Shh. Well, she's working. Evening, Jimmy. I think we have to say, <laughs> don't we, for Jimmy? This is true. Absolutely. Although he did say good morning, everyone. Uh, Diane says, beautiful quilt. Well, yes, we're not quilting today. We it's not really a quilt. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Natasha, a quilt. Bless her, said, we'll give you a little bit of an easier show, let you catch up a bit. Just do some cushion <laughs> finishing for me. And I was doing the cushions and making them and I got some bits left over and I was like 
there'll just be a blank space on the wall if we have cushions. So Jane's had a really busy time of late, flat out for us, and she is a trooper. Like she works really hard. <laughs> And we thought... No different from anybody else that works well, here. Well, you know, we're a really small team. There's literally yeah. like a handful of us. There's five of us, isn't yes. there? Six sometimes with Josh. Exactly. And, it, it, you know, we wanted to try and give you a slightly less wordy set of instructions to do. <laughs> and a slightly lighter yeah. week so you can get other things done. But also, Natasha always says, and I, I say the same, your cushions, when you bring them in, have this beautiful, and you'll dispute this, but you're not allowed beautiful professional finish to them like they're just gorgeous you know when you make your cushions and you go oh, I'm, I'm quite I'm pleased with that and then you see one of Jane's and you go mm, yeah okay <laughs> that's what Natasha and I do all the time so yeah we thought let's do a cushion finishing with flair show yes only Jane produced the most humongous amount of work because she did two different finishing types so we're going to do a second show on this which would be great um and then she just whizzed up the offcuts into ta da, this. <laughs> what do you like? Well, I just thought it needed something on the back. It shows the fabrics off because it's a new collection of fabrics, which is gorgeous. It is. Um, so, yeah. It is a beautiful it's collection. Just squares, really. But it wasn't really what you were supposed to do. No. <laughs> Never do as I'm told. <laughs> Never do as you're told. In fact, you know what? I bet your mother's here. She can mm. probably verify oh, that yes, for she us. Will. Oh, she'll give you <laughs> chapter and verse about me never doing More as I'm told. More than likely. More than yeah. likely. Uh, yeah, morning, lovely, stunning quilt. Again, it's not a quilt. It's a figment of your imagination, Becky. It's not a quilt. She's told us herself. <laughs> Definitely it's a cushion today. This not is a quilt. all we're doing today. Just this. That's it. Hey, it's good though, isn't it? It's, it's nice beautiful. finish. It's a nice finish. But beautiful fabric. Like you say, you've just whizzed together your squares yeah. and, and have them on point, don't you? Like, yeah. Like, gorgeous. But, but sometimes quilts only need to be simple, don't they? Yeah. And we'll talk about this fabric collection because it is absolutely gorgeous. Rona's with us. Faye's yeah. with us. And Julia France is with us also, as is Julie. Uh, we've got lots of people here this morning. Hello. Thank you for joining us. And Heather Gosh, all going on. Oh, bless. Rebecca has been, uh, yeah, feeling my fibro pain as well. She's been the same this week. The pain, I kind of grumble along and tolerate. The nausea, say, not yeah. so much. Um, but, yeah, the, the chronic fatigue when it, when it hits you. Ooh. I think the damp doesn't help, does it? It's been, no. Although it's been mild, it's been quite damp, hasn't it? Because we've had yeah. rain. The change in the weather definitely impacts. It, it impact does. You. And, you know, Monday, I worked from my bed on Monday. <laughs> You came into the office and I, I worked from my bed yeah. <laughs> with this grumpy face on. You swapped, you swapped and, uh, you my immune system was not happy. And then, yes, I was in yesterday, although I wasn't presentable. I wouldn't have been on screen yesterday. I was not no. presentable. I look like something terrible. Um, but yeah, no, today. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful makeup. as always. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. It's all good. Pam says, good morning, lovelies. Morning, Pam. And uh, oh, Lisa says, my baby girl is 17 today. Oh, many happy returns. My daughter's 17 and passed her driving test at the beginning of August. You've got that year ahead of you, Lisa. It is so much fun. <laughs> Drive to yeah. after school now and everything. I couldn't even dispute it. She bought her own car. Well, work, well she worked really money. hard to get that car, didn't she, bless her? Bought her own car. I mean, you can't you argue can't then. can't argue with it, can I you? I bought it. Oh, all right. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. What a lovely quilt and cushions. Well done, says Patricia. Thanks, Patricia. It wasn't me. It was Shane. Um, <laughs> gorgeous. But there's a slightly different finish on each of these, so we will yes. have a little look. We will have a look. We'll go through we will, all of we them. We will. We will. Um, we're going to break it down into two shows because um, it might get a little bit boring yeah, after a while. It, otherwise, <laughs> go I on just, forever about I just edging think, your cushions. Yeah, but I just think with with cushions, there's so much you can do. Yes, and you can take an orphan block as we call them just a block that you've yeah, made that's lovely block. and perhaps you don't want to make an entire quilt you just want to make well a block. sometimes you've made a quilt and you'll have fabrics left over mm -hmm. you can make a block that matches your quilt and make a matching cushion then which makes a lovely it's gift huge and if you're making one for the bed to have two cushions that match it it's really it's nice isn't lovely, it yeah but sometimes you just want to give a couple of cushions as a gift you know if you know someone's got a garden room or you know just their sitting room or whatever and you know what their color scheme is and what yeah. they like Easy how nice to make, to make some yeah. cushions I've done it for my godchildren as well they love a cushion yeah or a book cushion it's as well nice the mm. book cushion yeah and yeah. it's nice sometimes when um young adults are going off to university yeah give no, them absolutely. a cushion to take with them it's a bit of a hug then isn't yeah. it yeah comfy as well yeah because they won't be comfy in those digs they're not particularly yeah. you know they're functional aren't they yeah, they're very basic yeah 
Oh, Julia reckons the change in weather might be having an effect as well. Yes, I'm with you on that. Oh, poor Anne. She says, I'm starting a new diet today after holiday and you are talking about food. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Vicky says she hasn't braved a cushion yet, but have many on her list for makes and presents, so she's very excited for today's show. I think that's the thing. Yes. I said to you, oh, I'm really looking forward to today's show. And you're like, really? They're just cushions. But there's lots of us that go, oh, no. Mm. Yeah. Especially if you're used to making things that are flat. Yeah. And suddenly you've got to make something that's going to be 3D, Jane. Yeah. I know this is, you know, perhaps no, not I, something no, that No, I registers. know exactly what you mean. And my cushions do tend to be sort of... Oh, they're lovely. In at the sides a little bit. Yeah, but I love that. That's, I don't that's what do I go a, around boshing them to create. I don't that. do a zip back on my cushions. I do an envelope, but I do quite a Same. deep envelope backing. Yeah, I do so too. So that it doesn't gap. I do too. So I, I prefer an envelope backing. It, it's easier for washing and everything yeah. else. And also, I think if you're going to use it to lie on, it's got it sits, nothing hard yeah, on the nice back and of flat, it. Doesn't yeah. it. Exactly. I've always been the same. And I yeah. thought it was a bit of a cop out. And then I look at yours and I go, no, this is not a cop out. But I do need to up my game, Jane, because yours have that, like I say, lovely professional looking finish. No, thank you. So that's what we're all about today. Oh, Karen Hughes is with us. She says, morning, lovely girlies. Do you like being called girls? Thank you, Karen. Morning, Karen. <laughs> Karen makes lovely cushions. Jimmy's done a few cushions as well. Oh, yeah. Karen throws those cushions out at know. lightning speed. Amazing. I've never known anything like it. Oh, and Martin says, it's wet and windy morning here in Gateshead. Might start a cushion project after lunch. We do have a digital version of today's pattern, so go forth and enjoy. Yes. Oh, Heidi, however, morning from sweaty, humid Cyprus. Oh, oh yeah. not jealous at all. We're not jealous, no. We've got a rather damp, blowy, it's very blowy yeah. here. In our woolens. warm, which is really weird. Yeah. It was 15 degrees when I arrived this morning. Guy when you said, think I arrive at about yeah. quarter to seven in the morning, that's Guy weird. went out first things with the dogs and he came in and he said, it's weird out there. <laughs> I said, weird in what way? He said, it's warm. I said, shush, because I'm there getting my jeans and yeah, my, yeah. I put a different jumper on. And then he went, you don't want that on. Put the cotton one on. I was like, all right, cotton <laughs> jumper it is. But yeah, yeah, how bizarre. It is very bizarre. Lots of people with us today. Oh, Anne says, morning, ladies. And Auntie Lizzie says, sorry, I'm late. My carer had traffic problems. Uh, Auntie Lizzie, I just thanked you because I am sitting on the stool today. I'm not, I'm not great I today. I gave so. to Gemma Lizzie. Yes. Her need is greater today. Yes. Yes, yes. And and actually, I think I'd find it quite strange to sit and sew. <laughs> and I'm so but used to so standing. used to it now. Yeah. I know. But you have got your friend with you today. You've yeah, got our lovely friend, so the UX. I've got my UX aid here. Don't now, this is the machine. <laughs> this is the machine that lives in your workroom. Yes. Where she does sit. I must point out, we don't yeah. make a stand no, I, all day I sit to when sew. I'm actually doing yeah. lots of sewing. Demonstrating. Standing. We stand. Yeah. Tash does stand a lot to sew because she's just used to it. Although she has got a stool in her new workspace, which is looking gorgeous, by the way. Yes. Um, but you, you do sit. I do. And you have a height adjustable, Table. really fancy desk that the machine sits inside. Yes, I'm very lucky. Oh, don't worry. She's very well looked oh, after. I'm very well looked after. It's just here after. that she stands and, and has to sew a bit. Yeah. We do look after that. But the I don't do time. much sewing when I'm demonstrating. So no. It's fine. no, no, no. Oh gosh, Faith had finished the William Morris quilt yesterday. I'm pleased with myself. So you should be. Lovely. Oh, please share that with us. We'd love to see it. Um, if you have got a make that you're proud of and you'd like to show us, oh, we love to see those. We do. Community so, makes page. Yeah. Send you, them to If you put at... them on community makes, however, it will be seen by the wider world because that's our website and that yes. page is visible to everybody. But if you do just want to show us, you can pop it on email, like you say. Mm -hmm. Where's that go, Jane? Info at Natasha Makes, that comes to me. It does. You pick those I up. I look at it first. You do. If you don't want me to put it on the community page, just put a note, not for general viewing. For your eyes only. only. That's it. <laughs> um, otherwise, I forward it to... Um, I was going to find a song, Jane. There it is. There's always a song. Um, I I'll couldn't find one about a cushion, so well done. I forward it to SJ then and she puts it onto the Community Makes page. So if you don't want it on the Community Makes page but you want to share it with us, just put, you know, not for general viewing. Nope. That's the thing. That's the one. Because we do love to see what you're making. It's, it is lovely. But you might not feel that you want to share it with the world. And that's fine. But I think you should. <laughs> we, we think you should share everything because yes. we're really, really nosy. We're very proud Sorry about of that, you. But we are. You, it's lovely because, I mean, we get to... Sh to show all this beautiful fabric and we share our patterns and everything and it, yeah 
it's always really nice to see oh, what other people have made. We love it and, and quite often you take something that we've created and do something different with it and we love that too. Oh, we yes. love to see it when yeah. you use a different fabric, different fabric or you know do something. Yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Oh, it's so good. We've got viewers from all over the shop. Heidi moved to Cyprus because the weather in the UK she was in a lot of pain so she went out to the sun. Yeah. That's what Guy and I are going to do. Yeah. We've got no pensions. We've decided we're going to sell up and live in a lorry. We've met these brilliant people and they bought a lorry, yeah. a proper lorry. And you go in, it's like a house. It's called Flory the Lorry, if you want to have a look <laughs> on that there internet. They've, they've got an Instagram and everything. Lovely. Lovely people. They've got huge solar panels on the roof that gives them everything they need apart from water. Water is their one issue. Yes. They have to try and supply themselves with enough water. But they spend a huge amount of the year, I think it's in Menorca, and they've got like these big laundromats everywhere. They've got them more over here now as yeah. well. We have them outside supermarkets and stuff to do washing, so that's okay. Yeah. Um, but their dog has never lived anywhere but in Flory the Lorry. Oh, how I know. lovely. So this is our plan. And then we can live in the sun and I won't be in so much pain. It's good, isn't it? Sounds like a, a perfect great plan. plan to me. Great plan. Uh, Pam has just gifted her second ever quilt and made a cushion out of the spare half square triangles. Yes, Pam. That's what we're talking, talking about. about. Exactly. Don't waste those offcuts. You can make something stunning. That's exactly what we're talking about today. Amazing, amazing. Um, hello from Australia, says so Cindy. Hello. Gosh, gosh, gosh. It's all going on. Oh, and your mother's here now. She says hello. Morning, Mum. You missed the bit where we said Jane was doing as she's told. Yeah, or not, not doing, doing as she's told. Not doing as I'm told. And uh, uh, how, how give, likely it is that she'll do You could probably give chapter told. and verse on how often <laughs> I don't do as I'm told. No, probably We won't true. go into that. Probably true. <laughs> uh, but for, before we talk about today's fabrics, Jane, and today's makes, these beauties are sitting here. Oh, lovely half-metre heavens. They are, aren't they? Now, our half-metre heavens it came about um, mm. during that there pandemic when people couldn't get to a quilt shop and look at matching planes to go with their fabrics. And then we thought, well... You know, Natasha did this and it worked really well and everyone loved it. And actually, it's really relevant to our business anyway, because we're online. Those of you who've not shopped with us before, we're natashamakes.com. Um, and if you want to find today's products, you just go to the Watch Live page and scroll down and you will find them all there. Or if you follow the Workshop Wednesday tab. I'm going to pop into Overhead, Jane. Yes. So we can have a look at these. And uh, yeah, they are a bit beautiful, aren't they? This first one, I have to say... Sad it, times, if you miss this cut to order, it has gone. Yeah, there's sorry, only a sorry, couple sorry, of these everybody. Left. This is the Paisley Jungle Cobalt. Isn't it gorgeous? And I we have the paired cobalt. it with our magenta. Look at that, it picks up the purples. And there's a little I bit love of magenta a magenta in here. You'd never guess, would mm -hmm. you? Never, never guess that I quite like a magenta. I'm not a pink girl, but I love that kind of yeah, raspberry I like pinks, tone, yeah. and I like these these yeah. purpley pinks yes. really like them beautiful so yes these <coughs> go live at midnight tonight they're not available yet they do and we do have customers that we know sit there at midnight waiting <laughs> we do you can tell by the order we sheets. know who you are you know who you are <laughs> I've got this again you know if you wanted the big blooms in pastel this is i wanted to call it gray and of course it's not it's pastel look at that gorgeous isn't it this uh, is Karen's telling me not to leave too soon for me lorry no, in the sun because I don't want apparently to go just yet <laughs> you'd miss my shenanigans. Karen, I'm only 41 and I definitely can't afford to retire. We've got no pensions, so that'll be when we're very old and grey that we do this. Yes. Um, <coughs> this is with our Aqua. Aqua's one of the new newer, I should say, because we've had them quite it's a while lovely. now. But they put another 10 or so new colours in, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And Aqua's a lovely... Um, turquoisey pale turquoise and it just picks up the turquoises within this fabric beautifully. Fantastic isn't it? Because the background spot on here has got a little bit of that aqua tone to it. Beautiful and I just love that fabric Jane I think it would make well you could use this in a cushion as a centre. Oh yeah the so, centre of the cushion. Well a lot of these with the caves I think are really yes. they 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 deserve to be cushions yeah um, because they're just a pop of colour Especially and if you've got neutral rooms and you want to change up your room, yes, grabbing these brilliant bold colours, you could change them by the season and a lot of people do, Absolutely, don't they? Yeah. Neutral yeah. coloured rooms and just pop a colour in there through the, through the year. You can really just work it up then, can't you, with the colours, mm -hmm. like you say, seasonal. This is with lavender, I think. <clears throat> yes. Again, there's 
only a couple of these. That so would go quick. really nicely with that one before, though, the big blooms, wouldn't it, that yeah. lavender? I think that I would mean, be really pretty. You could put pretty. the two, you could have a feast and have yeah, the two yeah, together. Yeah, you could. And with the aqua. It's lovely. Looks Again, really nice. beach bags for these. Lovely big beach bags or shopping bags. Yes. Showing off the pattern to the best of its ability, which is why the block that I, cr that I created for the cushion was just to show the fabrics off, really. Yeah. I mean, you could use any, any block that you wished for a cushion front. You could just use a piece of plain... I say plain fabric. I mean, just a, a whole piece of fabric. Yeah. Um, this is the embroidered shawl. I love the embroidered shawl. You do, don't you, actually? I Because it's got bees on it. <laughs> I love a bee. She loves a bee. Look, you do love a bee. This. You've got quite a few little bee things. I've I noticed have. this. I have. And that's with our... Is it red or crimson? Oh. Lost the label. Cardinal. That's one of there our new go. colours as well, newer colours. Yeah, it is. And that just pulls us, this red in here, just pops it and pops the purple as well. Gorgeous. Really lovely. And again, that's crying out just to be made into a cushion, isn't it? Definitely. Or a nice big bag, on our beach bag, which we say it's a beach bag, but it's perfect for going shopping with. You know, and Vicky's made them with longer handles, and she really does. Like, she piles all the, the shopping in, or yeah. she'll, um, you know, if you're going out for the day and we're just going to, you know, need a few bits with us, whether it be a you know blanket to chuck on the floor or a big cardi, if you're not sure what the weather's doing, that yeah. kind of stuff. She perfect does that bags, with hers. Yeah, yeah. Perfect yeah. Bags. And Craft Club as well. When we go to Craft Club, I've noticed she rocks up with her beach bag and yeah, get it's all full of all her crafting there, goodies. Yeah. Yep, yep. You could make one for your knitting friend because they'd love it to have yeah. it for their knitting supplies. Well, it, wool takes up a fair old amount of space, it does. It does, yeah. Oh, now look the, at that. This pinwheels. Is this autumn, this colourway? I love the pinwheels. That's a very good question, Jane, to which I currently Lost don't have the answer. In the yes, it is. It's oh, autumn. Okay. And we have put it with marine because it just brings out... Yes, it brings out the blue because it's a perfect match, but it also pops the greens, which Amazing. is lovely. I love the way colours work like that. And Amazing. I love, I love blue and green together. So they used to say blue and green should never be seen? Yeah. Why? I love blue and green together. Seriously, adore Beautiful. blue and green together. What Beautiful. do they know? Mind you, they say you should never have black and navy on at the same time, and now people wear black shoes with navy all the time, don't they? Yeah. Things change, you know. House this leaks. is the name of house leeks. Yeah. And I said at the time, I said, I don't know why it's called house leeks. They're succulents, because aren't they? they're succulents. It's but not just go. me, is it? They are no. succulents. And may maybe that's another name for succulents. I, we need to ask Philip. Yeah. We need to ask him because, I mean, everyone knows I am a proper Philip fan. I think I'd fall oh, on the floor if him. he walked in. Um, I am just, yeah, he, he's incredible. His work is beautiful. But when he designs and Cave brings the colour, it's just, for me, like, you can't yes. better that. It's a wonderful you collaborative. You can't better it. It's beautiful, but um, we've put this with magenta. We need to ask him, don't we? Sangria. Sangria. That's Sangria. another newer one. Um, it just it, it's outlined on the edge of some of the succulents, and then the deeper colour here, and it just brings that out beautifully. Amazing. Really lovely. These are some of our new collection, August twenty twenty two collection of the cave. It's a new collection. I'm not going to lie to you, it's been a huge success. It's yeah. gone really well. So This is our best selling case. We collection. have got some of these left cut to order, but some of them we haven't. Yeah. So the half metre heavens really are your last chance. This is the um, jungle paisley again in lime, although it's very lemony and, um, you know, autumn colours, oranges yeah. and golds. And we put that again, we've put that with sky. Just brings out this turquoise here that's within that lovely isn't it and pops the greens i think everyone knows i'm a bit hippy dippy i quite like my floaty floaty wafty wafty things and uh, i love a paisley i just think this is beautiful amazing for festivals and you know yeah, just absolutely has that lovely boho feel to it doesn't it this is a classic we have only got a hmm, we've only got one of these <laughs> ah well this will be the last half meter. Finger first, this one so this when we load our when we load our stock we always underload um to make sure that we don't disappoint anybody is the theory because we don't like to run out of things occasionally with adjusting stock to create quilt kits and things or bundles 
there can be a miscalculation and we do end up short but quite often we'll end up with a half meter or a couple of half meters on the end of the bolt so this is where one will come out like this and you think well hang on a minute they've not had that for ages it will just be that that is the last piece that we've found it and gone oh yes. yeah there we go we've got a piece there um so Literally lucky you whoever gets bolt, it yeah that's the cloisonne black with pomegranate hang on just in case claire angelina's around Cloison. 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 I can never say it. Cloison. So you go cloison. cloison. It's a contracted yeah. cloison. Cloison. Oh, that sounds like croissant. A little bit. Let's talk about food again. Yeah, give food again. <laughs> Sorry, Anne. It was Anne who's on a diet, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry. This is the pop. This is watermelons. <laughs> now this is a classic. This, this is, is not a new one. Watermelons Earth. It is. Beautiful autumnal colours. We have had this in the past. We've put it with we peacock, have I think. half me to heaven it in the past. Yes. And it has disappeared in the past. Be warned all. <laughs> this is particularly fantastic for your Halloween pumpkins. Yes. Um SJ the pumpkin. Just make. in case you fancy getting out from behind the desk of doom in the front where are we? foyer let's call it that that sounds posh doesn't it yes we have got some halloween pumpkins made with some watermelons fabrics now everybody who's watching will find out whether sj is actually listening shall we see if she appears with some pumpkins because there's a delay bless her before she hears if she appears with some pumpkins and if she does we'll show you in a little while but uh, oh, oh, i hear the pitter patter of feet this you're all right wearing overhead you're fine you're fine you're fine <laughs> so these Oh, the Halloween pumpkins. The we call them the Halloween pumpkins. They're not. They're autumnal pumpkins. And for my money, I'd have these on display all year round. But, oh, I've just pulled that off. <laughs> Shouldn't pick them up by the stalk, <laughs> Jane. That one's only just been precariously glued on for the show. But that particular fabric is, oh, what's it called? Coleus or will it be the other one? It could be the other Caladiums. one. Caladiums. This, however, is the watermelons. There's another one. There. And Something there's another more. one in another colourway of watermelons. We That's have fun. got one in this, but the watermelons fabric, as you can see, they look amazing. They, they really lovely. suit those. Natasha's used cinnamon sticks with these. Yeah, so delicious. we've had the plastic stalks, which you've bought and we've had sold out and you've bought and we've sold out. And, but I love them with a cinnamon stick as well. I think they look gorgeous. But um, yeah, look at that. If you've not made a Halloween pumpkin before, and like I say, I say Halloween in the loosest term because I think they're just beautiful autumnal. Um, that pattern is a winner and it's so much fun to make. Yeah. You just need a doll needle. Make sure you get yourself a doll needle. Yes, because you need the long length of yeah. the needle, don't you, to get through the... To go through and do these pieces here. Lovely. Anyway, I digress, Jane. This is with peacock. <laughs> um, this is a lovely, rich turquoise again and it just li really, really highlights. I mean, it matches that colour but beautifully, but there's also a very... And it's almost like a grey colour here, but it really pops this colour against the um, the peacock. Really yeah. highlights it. Really lovely. Really lovely. Oh, Claire Angelina is around, so it's just as well I did correct the old French. Yes, because um, I'm hopeless, as we all know. I can't, we've uh, got can't barely speak English properly, <laughs> never mind any other oh, language. Sure. We've got lots of uh, praise for the fabrics. This is another one of my favourites of the new collection. This is, em is it embroidered shawl? Oh, I yes. think Jimmy wants you to describe embroidered beige. shawl in the other colourway, but we can describe this embroidered shawl. That you've this got some really huge blooms. beige. Mm -hmm. Which I was surprised at Cave because I don't think he ever recognises the, the colour beige. I don't think he thinks it exists. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I was surprised when this one was called beige because it's more of... Um, like a cappuccino colour in the background. Yes. And then it has these huge peach gradiating to sort of hot tomato colour. Yeah. But they are big flowers, aren't they're they? Huge. I mean, like as big the as small your hand, one, yeah. the smaller ones are like, I, I don't think I can span my hand across the bigger ones. How big is that from there to there, that largest bloom, Jane? How many inches it. are we looking at? I'm going to measure that. I'm going to measure that. That's nine inches. Nine inches across those big flowers, and they're just stunning. So this is a big, impactful print. This is not one for cutting up tiny and, and quilting with. Well, you could, you could. but you'd lose, your, you'd lose you'd the lose fact it. it's a flower. It's also got some like cornflower type flowers that are in a blue on this one with the turquoise, but we've matched it with our <clears throat> cardinal again because it matches that deep red that's within yeah. the, the colours. Lovely, isn't it? 
there's a little pop of, of blue and it looks a little bit like our Hawaiian on our plane. And I think we've matched it with Hawaiian before. Beautiful. It's lovely. Really is a bold in platform pattern, that one. And all the planes that we're mentioning here, they are available by the half metre. You can get these. So if you see them and think, actually, I've got that fabric and I need, you know, three metres for a quilt back. You know, if you most of your quilts, Jane, if you're going to piece your standard width fabric, we quite often say it's about three metres, isn't it? Yeah, unless it's a really big quilt. Unless it's massive. In which more, case, you'll know. <laughs> you know. If you've got... Um, a quilt that's 60 inches square or less, three metres, will do the backing for it at standard yeah. width. This is our Brollies. Again, this is from the new collection. This is by Brandon, and you can tell it's by Brandon because it's got that element of fun to it. Oh, amazing. It looks like parasols looking down on yeah, them from does, the top. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? That bird's um, eye view. Yeah, and we've put that with our marine because it really does pull out the blues that are I'm in there. I'm not sure so you can see. Well, from our monitor, it doesn't really show just how stunning these yeah. blues are. Almost um, a perfect match. Yes, it's a really it's got a good lovely one, isn't it? Orange and yellow, and a lovely red in there. It's a little bit sort of pop arty, I think. Nice. The pattern on that. I love it. Love it. Love it. Well, I'm glad you love it, Jane. So those are the half meter heavens. They are, which and will go they will live at midnight tonight. They will indeed. Absolutely. Oh. I mean, we, we've <coughs> sport them. I feel. Don't you feel we sport them? Yes, I think we sport them. We always do. Do I we think not? So. I think so. Um, but you can't get those now. Later. 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 A little taste. Bedtime. Later. And we've also pulled some of the patterns, haven't we? Because we're going yes. to look at your professional finishes today. <laughs> um, but we've done quite a few. I'm going to get this actual cushion. Oh, yeah, it's just please here. do. We've done quite a few, and Tasha's done some, you've done some cushions over the last, well, two and a half years yeah. we've been on your screens. Um, and they vary and they're all different. They all bring elements of fun or, you know, a different design element to your room, don't they? Yes. So we thought we'd pull some instructions, mm -hmm. let you have a look. And, you know, please do shop those instructions because they're 5 99 as well. These are phenomenally good value. Um, yes. for our yeah. Occasionally the they're slightly, slightly more involved. There might be a little bit different. trim with a visible zip on the back and that's using I'm our... I'm going to overhead that, Jane, to make it easy. Our lovely continuous zip. There we go. With our zip pulls. If you buy the continuous zip from us, you need to buy your zip pulls separately. Don't think yes. they come don't think they come no, with them. They don't. Because yeah. we don't know what size project you're working on. If you're going to make lots of small things, you'll need more pulls. And if you're going to make a bigger item, you might even need one or two, you know. So we we have broken it down so that you can get the length of zip that you want by the half meter and then the number of pulls that you want individually. And if you are going to use continuous zip and it's perhaps something you're not sure about, how to get those zip pulls onto the zip, don't forget we have got the zip pull tool with instructions as well, which will be a godsend. Yes. And Natasha's demonstrated that quite a few times. Visible zip you. with pom-pom trim cushion. And then you've got the piped cushion with discrete zip. And we've also got That's that one. That's over there as well, you in know. In the corner. So I'll go and get that one. Well done, Jane. Make you work for a living today. Why not? <laughs> Keep you fit. Backwards forward. Oh, this, backwards has got, forward. this hasn't got the discrete zip. This has got a visible zip on the oh, back. But, but you can see yeah. the piped. You can see the corners. I think that particular one is in Natasha's home. Yes, it's probably, the front gone, so see probably it. gone with her. These here, these fabrics, if anyone's falling in love with them, they are um, Odile by Earl, and you've had your chance, as Inga would say. Yes. Um, <laughs> they they have been and carousel. gone. It was they, a beautiful collection. It these were velvet, weren't they? They hang around for long. But the red round the side, Jane, I'll have a little look on the overhead, actually, because you'll see it better. That red round the side, this is our, I think that's wine velvet. Yes. We have really, really, really good value cotton velvet um, in lots of different colours by it's the half extra meter. Wide as well, isn't it, it is extra wide. Wine. And again, if you want to back your cushions in something a bit more luxurious, gorgeous a bit of cotton velvet, or even just, make, it, your or just make your cushions, cushions in from cotton velvet. velvet. Which are Do you know, Jane? I keep seeing everywhere cushions that are just a plain velvet with a contrast velvet piping. Mm. And they look amazing. They do, yeah. That's look really just amazing. a really nice way of, of showing, you know. Yeah. It's like we were saying, isn't it? You, you use your colour in your mm -hmm. accessories, making a cushion. But your instructions that we're going to look at today, if someone wants to do something as simple as that, they don't need to necessarily have a block, 
and you know no, create those I've, outside I've made a pieces. Block. I've given the instructions for the block and a little bit about the quilting, which we'll yeah. talk about in a moment. This is make this makes a sixteen inch cushion, which I think is quite a nice size. Yes, and so um, that's the size we've had behind us, isn't it? Yeah. This morning, the if if someone did say just want to for their first one not have to get a block and piece these half square triangles in although it is really straightforward but if they wanted to just have a first go with just a plain panel at the front and two plain pieces at the back what size would that front piece need to be what size square 16 inch square exactly yeah it's not like you've got to make it bigger to allow for the cushion in it no. because actually you want that plumpness yes. don't you jane i've used a 16 inch cushion plumpness but this is good it's given it it's not it's not tight. If you want no. it really tight, put a bigger cushion in. Yeah. So put like a 17 or an 18. If you want it flat and um, loose, put a smaller cushion in it. I've done a 16 inch and you can see that gives it quite a nice bit of body, but it's not tight. No. Because I like a little bit of softness in my cushions. See, I like them firm. So, it, you know, everyone's different, yeah, aren't they? Different. We all I, like different for feels. the caravan, I bought, they're horrible, I'll be honest. They're vile. <laughs> So I'm really glad they've got covers on them. I bought foam um, cushion inners. Oh, I know. Because they... in the caravan, we've got... Because um, we've got a little vintage caravan, for those who don't know. So it's built in 1981. And the windowsill at the back, you've got this metal ridge across there that you click the table into, Jane. Yes. So anyone who's sat there, if they want to lean, you've got this metal bit sticking, sticking into, into you. you. Yeah. So I bought these absolutely foul <laughs> um, foam inners. But yeah, really comfy because yes. you can lean on that and yeah, it won't. It's like won't, metal. Yes. What metal? It's yeah. not there. But yeah, if you want a softer cushion, yes, then what you said, Jane. Lovely. <laughs> Super. I'm going to move these. These are lovely. Out of the yes. Way. So let's get them out of the way because they are Just beautiful. They're gorgeous. Beautiful, but perhaps a little in the way. Um, and yeah, you can start showing us these lovely fabrics. We've put them together in duos, haven't we, Gemma? Well, you have, Jane. So you've got a beautiful well, eye for these I things. Came together and said, yeah. Can we put duos together for today's show? We did because, because this collection, Kate's Garden Gate, we have, well, Natasha has cherry picked this collection. She's done a little bit of which is my favourite, which ones do we like best, um, which is fine because she's got a fabulous eye and she buys well. Bravo. So well done, Tash. There's a large pattern with the big roses yes. on, and then there's a nice coordinating smaller pattern say what the name is of that because it's another french word and i wasn't sure how it's pronounced <laughs> is that beehive picotage, picotage i think that's i it. might be completely wrong on that picotage i My guess my head was going pikachu which is like oh, no, no that's nothing that's something completely <laughs> different i think it's picotage but i'm very happy to be corrected by claire angelina if she's about um but this whole collection collection is by a lady called betsy chuchian i think her name is for yeah. moda it's called Kate's Garden Gate, 1830 to 1860. Um, a bit of a mouthy one, that one. Quite, yes. you know. um, the reason is that her great, great, great grandmother, who moved from her home in Kentucky to Texas in 1857, hence the 1830 to 1860, um, she, she was born in 1801. She had 11 siblings and she has this whole theory that she was taught to sew at a young age and that, you know, help with the family's clothing needs and all that kind of stuff. The quilts that the great, great, great grandmother made haven't survived, unfortunately, but she, her daughter, Lizzie Carpenter, wrote all about the quilts in her journal. So as much as the actual quilts haven't passed down, the whole documenting of Lizzie's mother yes. having created these quilts is there. So what Betsy's done is imagined what the fabrics of the time might have looked like yes. and the colours and, and just given that really beautiful heritage look yeah. to this collection. She, um, she's very good at taking, um, going back and looking at previous patterns, Regency, things like that. She's her, that's her sort of yeah. feel of her fabrics. She likes the chintzy, she likes the um, retro prints, so it's quite romantic absolutely but what i like is you have got this beehive <coughs> element as well which is really quite contemporary so she's and the big the big style print as well yes it's beautiful i think there's a, a freshness and a contemporariness there that yeah the colorways are, are lovely with the teals especially yeah um, absolutely you know and 
and that cream's a classic. It's just beautiful. But it is. It'll work with everything. <sighs> this red with Modo. Oh, it's just spoilt for choice, Jane. Yes. Spoilt for choice. But you've put them together in these duos. This one, this is called a teal. This colour is called teal. Is the the picotage? Picotage? Picot is that picotage, blue or is that aqua? Aqua. Aqua. Yeah, so that's the one. So that's a teal and that's the aqua. This is cream and red. Picotage red. Nice. Now, I've matched the red with the picotage red as well you have we i didn't put because yeah. i was keeping them to the same colorways but actually when i put the cream with the cream it sort of didn't do very much it wasn't was very similar the, wrong with it per no. se but you just felt there wouldn't be enough contrast i just wanted a bit more cramped yeah. contrast so that's with the red as well as the red so it's not that it doesn't go if you want matchy matchy that's your that's your combo is all to of go this for is those. available by the half meter yeah. but we've put together some duos just so that if you wanted to have a go at the cushion you've got them together and um you don't have to worry too much about whether they go or not absolutely and, and this is the aqua this is beautiful isn't it this aqua and we've put that with the cream because the aqua just pulls out the blue in the small print i don't know if we can go a close lovely, up on it? this print because oh, yeah, it's so pretty let's have a look there really we go. Yes, you delicate can see the detail. Print. Lovely detail. Good shout there, Jane. Look at that detail. It's gorgeous. It's really lovely. Gives me a feel of the uh, um, Edwardian lady style. Okay. Colourways and things are very nice. Very lovely. But these are timeless, aren't they? You know, Absolutely. this is um, classic and this is the beauty of this collection. And of course, we've said it before, but we'll say it again: the mode of quality. Absolutely. You know, the base cloth is yeah. is a beautiful quality. You can't beat mode. It's lovely fabrics. And beautiful you've, you've to got work one with. That isn't a big floral, Jane. No, Natasha picked this one, which I thought was rather lovely. It makes me think it needs to be a fabulous cravat or an amazing shirt. Yes, look at it that. It would make a fabulous it's shirt. It's called feathers, isn't it? Yeah. Is it teal or is it something else? Oh, bear with. I shall go into the other screen. I'm just um, shenanigating. I'll explain what <laughs> shenanigating I'm doing in a minute. Natasha's uh, phone is currently broken. So she doesn't know the extent of my shenanigating yet. Let's see how that goes. If I'm not on the screen next week, well, um, she will because throw I've been in sacked. The bath, what can she expect? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that means I have had carte blanche to sh shenanigate at will. Yes. That particular fabric you've got there is the floating feathers in teal. Teal. It's a beautiful colour. This is well, they're feathers. They are feathers. Yes. But they've also got a feel of leaves to them. They reminded me of tumbling autumn leaves. Gorgeous. But as you say. You know, a cravat. Um, or a shirt. shirt or a, yeah. You know, it's got a little bit of a masculine feel to it. So, But I also think it'd look great as a vest top with jeans, yeah. something like that, or a really blouse. Really lovely. Brilliant. Really lovely. Now, I didn't particularly feel that the florals went very... Well, they go nicely because they're the same colourways. They look lovely with it. But because it it sort of gave me a masculine... Feel. I thought, you well, let's do something yeah. that's a little bit alternative. So I went to the Moda and I, I found the threads that bind. I found the tan stripe. You did. And I think that just gives it a classic, a classic feel to it. It was a great choice, it. Jane. Quite modern. Mm -hmm. um, a nice alternative, I felt. Well, and you also made a cushion with that, Jane. Yeah. This is the bound edge cushion, which we will do it will an, be coming a separate up. show um, with that one. But that was quite nice. And I used the same fabric in the middle for the binding. This is bound just pretty much like you would bind your quilt really. Again it's got the envelope back and um, it just gave a nice modern feel. You know, beautiful, you beautiful. You make that for your dad for his office or an uncle or your son for his yeah, uni. Yeah, really like it. Uni. Really Lovely. like it. But Jane has been shenanigating muchly with these fabrics. As much as we said to her, we'd like, you know, a, a classic and simple yes. tutorial, Jane. She's gone to town with it. Of course well, she has. The <laughs> thing is, when I do something, I'm like, well, if a beginner picked up this, would they understand that? Would they and understand you are good it? like that. You are good. And you throw it my way as well. And yeah. I'll go, Jane, I didn't get that bit. So I think... <laughs> Let's let's take it right back to the basics. Let's assume that this is the first time you've picked up a pattern and it's the first time you've made a cushion. Yeah. So there'll be those out there that, that know how to do a flange piping on a cushion. Um, there'll be those that, you know, 
do this all the time and they don't need the instructions. And actually, Jane, that's a really good point. What is flanged piping? Let's go back to yes. basics on that. Because we have just because we all love a flange doesn't mean that everyone else knows no. what a flange is even. Exactly. I have picked the colours that I felt go beautifully with the fabric collections. We have every colour under the sun. We have all the flange this. in all the world. We have beautiful bright colours. We have lovely neutrals. We have some very narrow, only in a couple of colours. Yes. We've got black, we've got navy, all yeah. the colours you can think of. Reds, you know, primary Absolutely. colours. Really lovely. Any colour you can think of that would go with any cushion, really. And anyone who's looking for this, this is flanged piping, but everything on today's show has gone into the collection for today, including just about every set of um, cushion instructions I could find, because that way you can have a browse through, and if there's other t cushion techniques you fancy downloading and trying, yeah. then you can get those too. Um, but I'm going to go overhead so you can show yeah, some... Uh, this is flange, I, or do you want no, to go, go close up? Let's go close up, and then you can actually see what the flanged piping is. You can make your own if you go piping. There. That's there it. Go. If you block the machine with your hands, That's there it. we are. You can see that it is basically a bias tape that is over some cording. And which you can, you can do that. Own, you can make you? your own. Yeah. So, you know, if you've got a fabric that you like and you want to make it into your own, we've got piping cord. We have. You just need to cut it on the bias because then it'll go nicely round corners and edges and things. Yeah, uh, Jane, again, that was something I didn't really understand to start with, but with a, um, when you're creating something that you want to go round corners, it, the, the cutting on the bias, basically cutting on the diagonal, isn't it, on the yes, fabric? Yes, because yeah, you've got degree angle from your fabric. Threads from the going that way. Salvage, yeah. And your thread's going that way, and there's load of stability if yes. you cut that way or that way. That's right. But if you start cutting that way, Everything has more it walk to yeah. it and stretch, stretches. which in the case of this is what you, you want because you because want, it, you to want curve. it to curve around to give you a nice, if you want to curve, I'll show you on mine. I've done something with mine that gives it, it's still curved. You can see on, on my cushion, okay, it's still got a curved edge. It's still got a, a pretty curved edge, but mm -hmm. I do do it so Beautiful. that it's, it starts off quite angular to start with and then as it moves it comes curved so I'm going to demonstrate that as we go through but I've chosen the top the khaki the cream that's got rubbed off the cream the beige the teal and I don't know what color this is because it hasn't got a name Ooh, on it but it's a very deep maroony color which goes beautifully with the deep red color yes on them um, I will find print. out for you in a moment. Right, okay, what colour is We have got some narrow. We've got that in the top and we've got it in navy. And that's a very, very fine, which I thought, if you wanted to, you could place that in between your square there. Beautiful. That might give you a nice little finish as well. So we have that. And it's just a case of popping it into your seam in the way that you explain in your instructions. Yes. Nice. So we've got those lovely colours that I've chosen because they go with this collection. As I say, we've got every colour under the sun, really. <laughs> we have. We do try. 72, this one here, is yep. burgundy. Burgundy, of course. So in the is. interest well, anything else. of <laughs> keeping it real. not confusing the warehouse. There we go. <laughs> That one's come in and got past me, Jane. That's yeah, what that's, that's done. It was a new one that I Actually, yeah, to. that's not it's not on the system. Naughty, naughty. We have a system. Everything has to go past me. I need to be the knower of all things. This is right. And when this things get like snuck in past my nose, then I don't know, then they don't end up on the website. <clears throat> which is, again, where sometimes it's a discrepancy. It's on a yes. day when I'm not in normally, isn't it? Yeah. If someone's helping out and doesn't know that I need to be the knower of all things. The oracle, some the may oracle. say, Jane. So I'm going to just show you how quickly how I made the block. Lovely. Just so that, you know, if anybody is doing this for the very first time and thinks, well, how she done that block to start with? It's a square and then two squares, slightly smaller. All the measurements and everything are within the instructions. And we've cut those through the diagonal to make what we call half square triangles. Yeah. You've got a biased edge here, so you do have to take care. But the biased edge goes against the side of the square, so ultimately the straight edge of the fabric 
is on the outside of the cushion so that makes it easier to um, handle. So it's a very basic square within a square front the block. I have um, joined the square. Now the easiest way that I know of to get the, the triangle and the square lined up so that the triangle is central is I fold the square in half and just finger press top and bottom so I've got a little crease in there and then I take the triangle and I put that wrong sides together line that up along the long edge you biased edge so do take care when you're doing this that you don't stretch it and again just finger press that I will then line those two creases up and that way I know that that triangle is now sitting in the middle of that square sometimes the uh, simplest methods are the best are they not Jane absolutely we've all done it with paper haven't we yeah remember you know, folding your paper in half to make sure you're in the right place on the hole punch. Yes. It's the same premise same here, isn't thing, it? Isn't it? So you will notice that my triangles are bigger than my square. They're a little bit bigger than I would have normally. If I was making a square within a square with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be this big. Okay. But because I wanted the cushion to have a little bit extra either side, yeah. I made it so that the triangle is bigger. Because you don't want to chop because the I corners don't want off to your middle block. I right. don't want to lose the points of the square. Yeah. If I go, if you oh, can I see. see. So you've got that little bit that that makes sense. Got that little bit extra there, because you're going to take it into the seam allowance. Because otherwise, take quite a bit off yeah. the seam allowance on there, and you still don't want to lose the point. Because also, when you've got your cushion in, it plumps that whole yes, block out and curves it, yeah, the, and curves the, it in. So you wouldn't be able to see this, would you, if it was any closer to that, no, that flange right. piping? I get you, Jane. Makes sense. So we place the triangle in opposite, co opposite sides of the square and we sew with our regular quarter of an inch seam and I'm going to just quickly do that and then do the other side as well just so that you can see how this comes together. Beautiful. And as I say, we've said haven't we, if you've got beautiful fabric that's a large print that you don't want to cut up but you want to show it off. You don't need to make, you might want to make this a square within a square with a plane or something. You know, your half metre heavens, they would work beautifully with that. Yeah. Um, but just a 16 inch square will do for the front. This is the size that I'm making. I'll do the trick. So I'm just using a quarter inch seam and I'm just going to sew that along the side of the edges together. Oh, I listen to that machine. So this is the UX8 for anyone who's not seen it in action before. This is the Rolls Royce. It's a dream machine, it really is. We love it. You can sit and watch us on YouTube on this machine. <laughs> and some of you do. If you're watching us on the UX8 while sewing, hi. <laughs> Incredible. It's a beautiful machine. It's not a bad life, is it? Mm, hey. No. And we've got this machine in. We've, we've got a lot of <coughs> cheeky machines in. I think we've got most in the armoury now. Between us of what we've got at home and what we've got in house, we've definitely kind of covered off yeah, a good it, portion of the most much, popular ones. Yeah. Um, but this here is... Could we pop the iron on, Gemma? Yeah, of course we can. This here is the all singing, all dancing one. This is the machine of envy, of great envy, Jane. And it's yours, my well, dear. It's in your bit, room. It's my room. I get to use it the most. Yeah. Everybody has access to it. John uses it sometimes when he comes in. Yeah. And he says, oh, I'm using your machine. I'm like, John, it's not my machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> it's the, it's it is, Jane. Natasha makes machine. I'm just going to pull this. That's all right. Oh, so I can get that across there. So you can show your pressing. And we're going to press, just press that away. And I've pressed it so that it's away. And again, because this is a biased edge, we're just going to take great care that we fold that over and we do literally press that away. No ironing. We don't do this because it could stretch our fabric and distort the, the finished just article. down. Just pressing it down. I found it easier for the seam to go away from the square, so under the cream, which is a bit sort of against because we like to, to press towards the dark side. But sometimes you have to look at how 
your design's going to sit and, yeah. it, and it changes that way. Sure enough, that's right. If you wouldn't mind popping I've got it, back. of course. And then we go again with the opposite sides. So we've got these two done top and bottom and then we're going to do the side. And again, we'll just pre place that together. You can line up the seams this time so you know that you're in the middle. Just put a finger press there and there. And that just lines up, gives us a mark to make sure that we've got these triangles in the right place. You'd want to treat your fabric with your um, flatter, your best press, your starch, just to help. I fussy cut to a certain degree these um, squares in the middle, just because I wanted to, to section off the, the large rose print, which did mean that my um, fabric, I'm not gonna say it was exactly on the bias, but it's not going with the straight of grain. You could get it still with a straighter grain, but I did sort of cut a chunk out of the middle of my half metre piece, just because I wanted to um, accentuate that beautiful sort of rose bouquet in the middle. Lovely. And we did feel that these fabrics went particularly well together as the half metre duos. Yes. Um, and I, I got a little bit shenanigated with that, Jane. A <coughs> few. Yeah, a little bit. Because, you know, Natasha's phone's broken as well, so I couldn't speak to her and um, <laughs> we did try, agree, didn't we? agree what we were doing with this. We did try, honest. Yeah, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I may have done a bit of a deal on these particular bundles. Oh, so have you? The fabrics are available by the half metre at the usual 7 95 However, if you are buying one of Jane's chosen half metre duos, they are hand-selected by our lovely Jane and approved by myself. Uh, and Natasha's had a peep at the moment as well as she, she yes, thought they were rather beautiful. They but these duos, when you buy those, instead of it being 15.90 for those two half metres, I have put them up at 13.99 for today only. Oh, so you are getting late. nearly two pounds off your bundles. Um, if you want to buy them and have two metres rather than I think two Natasha's half metres. Natasha's running down to the phone box as I know. we speak. She, she's, hopefully she's not watching. <laughs> um, but if you want to buy so that you're getting two metre lengths rather than two half metres, just add two to basket. You get three to basket. You'll you get know. three quarters, yeah. Exactly. We will cut it so in a continuous so length. Yes. So. Exactly. Exactly. That lovely machine. Geraldine's with us today. Very happy to get the show live. Hi, Not touched Geraldine. base for ages, which is nice. Press these back again now. Of course. There we go. Just lean across you and grab that. That's oh, fine. Thank you. There we are. Just trust me with the pressing normally, ladies and gents. Today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know you're busy trying to get it's stuff all right. done. It's all you? good. We're fine. Look at those. There we are. Oh, look at that fabulous square. Beautiful. So, <clears throat> you can see there, that's the cushion front. Now you'll want to layer that up. And I just use, um, I've got quite a lot of off cuts of wadding, trimmed from, um, you know, trimmed from quilts and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But if you get a half metre piece of wadding, that will give you two cushion fronts. It will. Um, I've so just to lined it with Jane some of our calico. Quickly, for, for those that are, are making their cushion, if they wanted to, if they'd got an, a, a block that was already um, 16 inches yes. at this point, or if they had a smaller block, they could sash it to make it to a finished 16 inches. Yes. Perhaps they've got an orphan block that sits best that way on or a fabric that sits best that way on. If they sashed it to make it a finished 16 inches with a nice little margin here, Yeah then that would be what they'd need to then carry on from this stage of yes, the demo, is that absolutely. right? Absolutely, you could Brilliant. use any block, any piece of fabric. Lovely. Um, this piece of wadding and calico is 20 inch square. You can manage with <coughs> an 18 inch really. You want to give yourself a, a good inch all the way round really when you're quilting. Um, I've just used some calico on the back. This piece is not going to be seen, so don't use your best fabric. Just use something, a, a scrap piece, you know, anything, bit of calico, muslin, even um, interline interfacing, mm -hmm. you know, if it's not iron on interfacing, Amazing. you could use that instead. It's just to put something behind your wadding, because really, I'm, I mean, 
I'm gonna, not going to lie to you, I have sewn without a backing on before now, so yeah. my wadding's been against my machine. It's not really the best thing to do for your machine because it can pull the, the bits of the wadding into your machine, which fluffs it up more. Yeah, so we're trying is to avoid floofing our machine yeah, if we can. It is better to have some sort of backing. So you're making yourself a sandwich like you would do if you were quilting. Now, you can do the most very basic quilting on this. You could just quilt in the ditch around the seam. That would be enough just to hold it together while you carried on with your cushion front. Because it's got a cushion in it, it will pull it taut, so don't worry if it's a little bit wrinkly. You can see on this one, I've quilted in the ditch, and then I've done a parallel line just outside, and then I've just quilted, echo quilted just a, less than a quarter of an oh, inch okay. on the inside. Should we go close If we up, can go close up, yeah. I don't know whether it will show. I don't oh, know that is. you can Look see it. Yes. So you can see, just in the ditch still on there, yeah, and then just it's a, a parallel side, line. Actually probably this side actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. parallel line there. I just used the width of my foot and then um, I think there's another bit on the walking foot that, that I could use as a guide. And then slightly less than a quarter of an inch, Echo quilted it around there, around the inside of there. And then just did a, a filigree in the corners. Oh, I just did a filigree in the corners. I'm can we just pull that a little bit, yeah, <coughs> there we go, see if we can get it in the light. Look at that. Just a bit pulled there. I'll just show you and these, how... These small projects are a really good chance to have a go at these yes, things, aren't they? Yes, because you can just filigree. do a little bit. Because you've only got a small area to work in to try and keep yeah. it looking relatively consistent. I think, for me, when I look at doing a big quilt and trying to, you know, meander, as you sometimes <laughs> say, yes. oh, just have a meander, Gemma, it'll be fine. No, don't, Jane, it won't be fine because there'll be a bit that doesn't look consistent. But if it's just a small area like this... Yeah. It's less daunting it is. and a really good way to practice. I'm just going to show you on one quarter of this what, I've, what, I've, what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to just, I keep saying just, I'm going <laughs> to. I'm very lucky on this machine that there's a, a, um, an arm that comes down and it then makes it into an even feet, what they call an even feed foot, which is like your walking foot. So I don't have to change to a walking foot with this machine. If you've got a walking foot, change it to your walking foot. You're quilting now, so you need to have that. Um, looseness of, of pressure with your foot so your walking foot literally walks across the top of your fabric it doesn't push it your ordinary um, presser foot on your machine pushes the fabrics you can quilt small projects with your pressure foot with your with your ordinary foot but you may find that it pushes the fabric on the top away from the the base and the wadding so for a, a cushion front you might get away with it but for a bigger project you'll get to the bottom and your, your quilt front won't be um, with your wadding and your backing. Which is not ideal, Jane. It's not really what you want. So if you, you can get some machines, you get them with a deal and they come with their walking foot. Yeah. If you can get a machine like that, then... then or integrated it. as our yeah. Dukies have. D Dukies are integrated. Some of the, the smaller models like the DX, it, mm -hmm. that, you get the walking foot separately. Separately, with yeah. Um, <clears throat> The, um, prof the semi-professional one comes with all the kit, the walking yeah. feet and everything on that Amazing. one. Amazing. The semi-industrial, um, the, um, yeah, the, the semi-industrial one that we've got. Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. Well, what's it called? What are we doing? I've got one. I can't remember its name. No, because I'm trying to say 2020, TL 2020, but that was the special edition in the Platinum. Yes. It's the 2200. The TL 2200 is the white version, which is the one you've got, isn't it? Yes. 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 Yeah, Walking foot though, the first thing, first time I used one, crikey, it made a noise. Had you not lift, put the lever on the, yeah. They come with a lever that has to either sit on above the nut that holds the needle in or it's got an art, um, like a prong that goes either side of it. Yeah. So you have to just look at your instructions. Many years ago, <laughs> different machine, probably not the walking foot that was strictly for that machine either. Don't do any of these things, do it proper. Do it as you're told and read the instructions. Yes. <laughs> yes. So when you're quilting, you don't sew at the same speed as when you're piecing, particularly if you've got a walking foot on your machine, no. it doesn't like it. I will warn you that your walking foot will not last forever, it will wear out. Like your shoes. Depending on <laughs> how, many, how much you use it, obviously. Yes. It'll last you a long time, but I um, remember going to my supplier and saying my walking foot's broken I need a new one really quite cross and he was like well what do you expect you do a lot of quilting 
<laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. You wouldn't walk on your shoes everywhere no. and expect them not to wear out. This is it. So It's true though. Treat it with love and affection and look after it. But you can see why but it's it called a do. walking foot. Look at it beautifully walking there. Yeah, and trot, it doesn't trot, trot. push. It doesn't push the fabric. So I'm just echo quilting on the cream. I'm doing that because I've got cream in my machine. I would probably change to um, a blue colour that matched the background of this and I would do it in the ditch um, ordinarily. But I'm just doing it on the cream because I've got cream thread in my machine. So I'm just following the centre square round on that. Beautiful. Um, I'm just going to do half because, you know, for the best one in the world, it's a bit like watching paint dry. Oh, I don't know. I find it quite therapeutic, Jane. Um, so when you come to the end, you can either um, do a locking stitch, which will just stitch on the spot, and then you can cut your thread, and that takes the thread through to the back. Because this is a cushion front, you get like a little tail. And that will be fine because that will be inside against your cushion, so that's no problem. You can always lift your needle out of your fabric, pull it a little bit to get a, um, a tail, and then snip your thread. And then you can tie the tail and slip the ends into your layers. So into the wadding, but not through to the back, and that hides the, the ends. Right, so... That's some kind of witchcraft. A little bit of... I can, I can just... Got that in there. Have I got a needle? Yes, I have. It's a bit big. It's bigger than I oh, would normally we're going use. Yeah, it's a bit bigger than I would normally use, but we can do it. Um, there'll be another needle floating um, around. It's not like we haven't got a warehouse full of stuff next door, is it? So, on a quilt normally, I would take my top thread, I would just grab it from the back and bring it through. I haven't got really a very big end on that one, so I can't tie it, but I would tie it, manually tie it, just like you would in any knot. And then grab the two ends, put them through an eye of a needle. I'd use a, a, a needle with quite a big eye, probably not as big as this one. And then you just thread that into the back of your fabric. I can do this now because I can lift it away. And you can see that needle has just sort of gone into the wadding. I just pull that back through and bring the thread out along the length. And then I would just pull that thread a little bit tight and snip it off and then it will poke itself back in and nice. that hides the threads away and gives it a neat finish and also prote protects the thread from it becoming um you know unwound and unsewn unraveled unraveled that's and, the yeah. world <laughs> unraveled goodness we've me. got all the words today all jane just not necessarily in the right order or place <laughs> so i'm now going to change my foot to um it's called, it can be called a darning foot or um, free motion foot or embroidery foot. It's, sometimes it's a circle, sometimes it's metal, sometimes it's oval shaped, sometimes it's metal with um, a, a clear perspex um, sort of like collar on it. Sometimes it's like a horseshoe shape. Oh, Jane, it's, I'm so sorry, this is not, there we go. There we go. I only press that button about eight times. There um, we are. I don't know if you it can behaves see really it well today, hasn't it? it there, there we, we go. go, you can see it, well done. That's so, um, as I say, perfect. circular, sometimes it's metal, this one's um, perspex, sometimes it's metal with a perspex collar, um, and sometimes it's like a horseshoe shape. All does the same thing, it's for your free motion embroidery or your free motion quilting. Um, you saying about free motion, we have a little mention on here actually. Yes. Um, Geraldine has said that she's had her first go at free motion quilting the other week on a play mat for Joseph. Yeah. And um, yeah, she says, that's it now. She's not going back. She loved doing it. That's the future for her. It's so easy and no one can say you've gone wrong. No, this is it because nobody else knows exactly what the pattern was no. meant to be like anyway. Exactly. So, you know, clearly I need to have a word with myself. Yeah. <laughs> because it doesn't have to be it, perfect. No, of course it doesn't. It doesn't. And... The more you do it, the better you get at it. Jane does this thing as well where she'll show me something she's done, especially if it's something she's done a while ago, and she'll say, well, look there, you know, I sneezed there, or this happened, or there was a noise, yes. and, and that's actually a slightly bigger gap than that bit there, but you don't notice it no. as someone who hasn't stitched it In the it overall out. project, and I say this about um, quilts, they're usually on a bed, yes. or on a wall, on the back a of the sofa. Yeah. You're about three, your lap. three feet away yeah. from it. So if you can't see the mistake from three feet away, 
Nobody else well, is going to want to. How often, apart from at a quilt show or a competition, are they completely smooth, completely flat, and you know? No. They're not. They're no. scrumpled up. Once they've they're been hanging, washed, yeah. let's not even go there. Once they've been washed, they yeah. get that beautiful heirloom yeah. wrinkliness to them anyway, don't Squishes they? Quite often. In, yeah. um, and it's all part of the story of the quilt, isn't it? Yeah. So it's threaded exactly the same way. You can drop your feed dogs. I'm going to be controversial. I don't drop my feed dogs. Jane. The, the, um, the embroidery foot does not engage with your fabric. It still moves freely underneath. There's no, it doesn't grip your fabric. There's no grip there, even with the feed dogs up. I take the top thread and I hold it. I'm just going to put this back into the middle because I don't want it catching on the side. It won't, but I don't want it to. Have your needle in the middle of the, the foot, in the middle of your machine. Hold your top thread, drop your needle in. Um, lower the foot again, that's it, and then raise the needle. This will grab the bottom thread and you give that a pull so that they're approximately the same length. Drop your needle back in. So you've got the bobbin thread and your top thread at the top of your work. Just get your unpicker or your stiletto or a pin and just pull those threads from under the foot and put them behind you so they're out of the way. So you won't get them tangled. This stops the bobbin thread tangling up in your work on the back of your work. Because if it's if hanging that's loose, happened to me once, it's happened to me several times, Jane. Yes. And there are reasons these things happen. Yeah. Listen to Jane, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> when you're free motion quilting, you yeah. go a little bit faster than you would normally go comfortably. Yeah. This is what puts a lot of people off because yeah. they feel like the machine is running, running away. away with them. Yes. The beauty of having a machine like this one is you can set your speed. So it doesn't matter how hard you put your foot down on your, I your don't, yeah, um, sure pedal, foot pedal, mm -hmm. it's not going to go any faster. I was about to say, I think we can show it, but we can't on the close up. But you have a, you have a slider. A, and it goes and the from slider tortoise goes from to tortoise, tortoise to hare. Hare is fast, tortoise is slow. Um, with free motion quilting, you are in charge. As I said, the, the um, free motion foot, the darning foot, embroidery foot, whatever you want to call it, does not grip the fabric. It sits just above it, floating on the top. So you have to push it through the machine. You are the speed. It doesn't matter on here. This is only going to stop it going any faster. But if I don't, if I don't do anything, if I just put my foot down on that, it's just going to stay where it is. It's not going to go anywhere. So it's just on the spot. So I have to push it through the machine. Now, if I go slowly, it's going to make a short stitch. If I go fast, it's going to make a long stitch. So this is where practice comes because you mm -hmm. find the speed that you can comfortably work with. Yeah. And you find the motion that you're comfortable with to get the right stitch length. It's the machine is going quite fast, but I'm moving the fabric quite slowly. You might find when you first start you're a bit jerky, but as we've just discussed, nobody's going to see. If you're using the same colour thread as the background of your fabric, it disappears in and you can't really see the stitch length either. So you might find a few stitches are short, you might find a few stitches are longer. I'm just doing a basic filigree. So basically I'm just taking the machine for a walk across my fabric in a meandering fashion with no preconceived pattern and just filling the space. You can do it quite tightly together, you can do it quite loosely, it's holding the three layers together, it's as much or as little as you want it to be. You can do big loops, you can do small loops, shallow loops, whatever. Really what you want to do is you try not to do it in lines. You try and sort of move across your fabric. I suggest that you have a go at doing it with a pencil on a piece of paper before you start on your machine. I quite often, when I'm thinking about doing um, quilting, I'll, I'll sketch it out a few times on, my, on a piece of paper to um, get an idea. And it sort of produces a muscle memory. 
when I'm teaching people, I say try quilting your name. You know how to write your name with your eyes, cl eyes closed. Daft as you like, it's the thing you automatically yeah. do you when you get to that. have a go on one of these so machines. <laughs> you can do free motion quilting. You can see I'm not moving. I'm not moving the fabric very fast. The needle's going quite fast, but I'm not moving it quite no. very fast at all. You will get to know, and even if you go slowly like this to start with, that's fine. It's what you're comfortable with, and as you get more confident, you'll be able to gather up your speed and go a bit faster. And it really is, and because we've get left that seam allowance on, on the corners of this one, you can go all round the edge, no problem. Um, don't go right off the edge of your fabric because you're going you're gonna to lose some of it in your seam allowance anyway, so keep it close. But if you do go off the edge, it doesn't matter, you can come back on as long as you make sure that the edge of the fabric is, is flat. I spray basted my three layers together, you, but you can pin it or you can tack it, whatever you want to do with it. It's exactly the same as layering up um, your quilt whichever way you want to layer it up. It's quite mindful. Once you've got over the panic and you remember to breathe, because you hold your breath <laughs> while you're doing it. You do, but you do it whenever you're trying something new like this, yeah. don't you? I was about it's oh, quite gosh, relaxing. 20, 20 minutes into my driving test when the, when the examiner said, Gemma, and I said, Jay said, you are allowed to breathe. <laughs> and I've got a really funny colour. Well, yes, I was, I was holding, holding your breath, breath with concentration. <laughs> Oh dear, but we do, don't we? Yeah. And again, when you come to the end, you can do a stay stitch and cut your thread and you take the threads behind. Or you can do the same as I just said when you're doing your straight stitch and you can just pull it a little bit, lift your needle, pull it a little bit, have the ends, take the end through to the back because you will have your bottom and your top thread as normal by this time and you can just pull your threads through. Oh, can we go close up and see that bit that you've just done? Can we, Jane? Can yeah. we? Can we? If I turn it over, there. you Come might on. be able to see it better because it's on relief. <laughs> oh, well, that's true. Do you know, actually, it was one thing at Festival of Quilts that you know I loved seeing was when people had just done quilts that were like this. Yeah. But everything was in the quilting. The detail yeah. was all there. Like, There's some incredible. There were some beautiful at the Festival of Quilts, really intricate feathers yeah, and, and things like that. And some of it was so minute and it <coughs> just looked like it must have been done by fairies or pixies because yes. it was just so Tiny. small. But it really Incredible. pushes up the fabrics behind it, doesn't it? But it was it was on completely neutral fabrics like yeah. these. Just amazing. Um, look at that. I love it. And that will fill that will fill up um, an area of your quilting quite quickly. But it's a good, like you said, it's a good cushion covers are a great way to practice. Yeah because you, the small project it's easy manageable yeah. piece of, of fabric to work with you know you're Table not going to feel runners, overwhel yeah, overwhelmed yeah. with it sitting over your no. um, you know great big quilt that you're trying to get through your domestic machine yeah, absolutely so once you've done all your quilting you're just going to trim this level with the edge of the quilt quilt cushion front cushion front whichever whatever you want Th to call that it. there that there thing so I'll do that. <laughs> Whatever thing you're working on. This is the one I, I did, did. This is the one I did earlier with the other colourway, the cream and the red. Oh wow, which is rather lovely. There's our blue Peter moment, everybody. Oh, she says, "Will you please just do as you're told, machine? It won't go into overhead for me now. Oh, it's having a right old strop. I'm it's clicking the okay. overhead button. It keeps saying wide, close up, close up, wide. There we are. There we go. So when I'm trimming this off, I'm using. The 45 degree line on my ruler against that line there just to make sure because you can see here how it's sort of crinkled a little bit on the edge so I just want to be sure that I'm straight um, against the edge I'm still using the fabric as a guide and I can give it a little tug both sides just to make sure that it comes in but you might find that you trim a little bit of your edging fabric off to make it straight Just so that I get it square, if you like. Lovely. 
I have tagged all the flanged piping in all the world into today's collection, so if you wanted to have a look there, uh, don't forget when you're looking at these pages on our website, if you scroll down, there's a button that says view all products. If you click that, you will see everything. If you don't, it will only show you a little bit and that would make you very sad. You'll miss all the good stuff. There's lots on there to be seen. Uh, talking of which, Jane, there have been many, many people I have noticed who have been buying the bolt ends. We have been loading our bolt ends when we have three metres or less of a fabric it's quite often taking up space on a shelf that we need for new stuff that's coming in. It's not enough for a project or a show. We are more increasingly now doing some bolt ending for you. So that is a brilliant opportunity to get, like I say, around three metres, maybe a little less yep. of fabric. Great for your quilt backings, lovely for your, well, stash building in yeah. general, Jane, you know. I'm just making sure that I've mm -hmm. got this square now on my oh, mat. Yes. You can see I've cut two sides that's square on the lines on the mat and I'm just making sure now that I'm at 16 inches because I looked at this and I was like mm, that's not very straight <laughs> but it's just the quilting has pushed the fabric but slightly okay. yeah. I've got my 45 degree line there so I know that that's at the right angle so I'm just going to trim that off and that seems like quite a lot to trim off there but I want a 16 inch square no, so that's fine. I'm quite happy with that. Jane you know all of this is really helpful because a lot of us would you know especially when we've not quilted or it, we'd look at it and go, oh, no, it's all gone out of shape, what do I do? But that 45 degree angle on that ruler is so helpful. It is to really match helpful up with the just to line up with that, to make sure. And then once you've cut two sides, you can then look at it. Don't panic if it's at like 15 and three quarters or something off. like that. As long as you carry on cutting all of it the same size, you're gonna end up with a square. Absolutely. This works for any size square. So, you know, Absolutely. don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Right, so the backing, the envelope backing. Um, These pieces are bigger than you'd think, aren't they? Yes. When you first do it, you're like, what? But this is right. So <laughs> Because I like to have a good overlap, as I've said before. So when I'm measuring, this works for any cushion, any size cushion, this envelope backing, my um, maths. I take the size of the cushion front. I divide it by two, so this is 16, so divided by two is eight, and then I'll add four inches, which makes it 12, and then I'll add half an inch for my seam allowance. So these pieces here are 16 by 12 and a half. I do two of those, so you can see here, they overlap quite a way. Mm -hmm. More than four inches, but they overlap. Yeah. And that just makes it sit flat and doesn't make yeah. it gap if you look on the back of there because sometimes if you make it smaller it does it yeah. does that on and the back and, yeah. it, and it doesn't look very nice so yeah. I like it to have a good a good width of overlap yes. on there and it does it lies a lot flatter um, and the belly of your, c your cushion isn't going to be peeping out is it Jane? No that's right that's how so on here I don't know if you can see it I have pressed it over by about a quarter of an inch I'm not, I don't get a ruler out to measure it. Quarter of an inch, and then I press it over again. Mm -hmm. So that raw edge is encased Lovely. within, the, within the, the hem. And it's just on one side of the long side of your rectangle. So it's on the 16 inch yeah. length. And you can see here, I don't know if you can see actually, you might be able to see, oh, I've yes. hemmed it on the quarter of an inch mark, but I've also hemmed it just inside, just about an eighth of an inch away nice. from the fold. I just think that just gives it a nice finish. You get a sharper edge then as yeah. well, don't you, if you just put that stitch line down. Just That's looks lovely. nicer to me. It's just a, it's a personal, personal preference. Personal preference, yeah. That's how it is. So that's your backing. Now, if you just wanted to make um, <clears throat> an edged cushion like this one, this has got no edging on it at all. It's just put together. Yep, no flange in there. There's nothing in there. You would just simply place these, the raw edges, so that the hemmed edge, so the hemmed edge is facing the middle. You'd place them right sides together and you would sew, pin it down probably would be helpful. Yeah. You'll sew it with your walking foot because you've got four layers of fabric mm -hmm. here now, all the way around. Yes. You don't have to leave a turning gap through because that's your turning gap there. Yeah. Snip the corners off, it just reduces the bulk. So take the corners off. You may find that once you've got it sewn on, 
that sometimes it's a little bit bigger on the on the back than it is on the front. Mm -hmm. Again, that's just the quilting, so you can trim that down. Nobody's going to know. No. Only you know that. So you can um, just sew that all the way around, trim your corners off and pull it through, and that gives you that finish there. That's just and this is an what, edged this one. This is what I, I've been doing, Jane, with my cushions. If I'm completely honest, that's what I've been doing with mine. I haven't been doing any flange piping because I worry I'm going to make a mess of it, and, and that's how I've been finishing mine. But that's just, um, that's okay. It's like it? confession time today. But the two <laughs> things I've noticed about doing this are that I need to pay attention that I'm laying down my pieces in the right order yeah. so that I know which one's going to end up on, on the top and which one's going to end up inside. Yes, yeah. But also, if I'm using a directional print, Jane, then with those big pieces, when I'm hemming them, I need to make sure that I'm folding over the bottom of one and the top of the other yes. so that the edged yes. pieces the are best going thing to be to against do each other. is to lay your fabric out how you want it to be when you're yes. looking at your cushion. So if it is directional, like you've got a stripe just making sure that the stripe runs down and then you can see and then you can decide which side you want to have if you want to you can just pin those before you then flip them over and put them onto your fabric if you know we've all done it we've all looked at it and thought right that's right then when we put it on and undone it after we've sewn it we're like well that's upside down why has that happened just pin them together before you actually flip them and put them right sides together and then you'll know they're in the right orientation. Yes. So yeah, look at your fabrics before you start hemming them to make sure that you've got the hems. I don't right mind edges. embarrassing myself if it means that someone else doesn't make the same mistake. Well, this but, is it. You know, you know if we can help you with because we've all made we've done we've done this, we've made the mistakes. So hopefully we can advise you so you don't have to make them this one <laughs> we I've make just, mistakes so you, you don't, don't have, have to, to. <laughs> this one i've just done with um a cross hatch of oh let's see if we can see it on the overhead or do you want to go close up let's try go close, close up, up and see if it works close up. oh we can see it close up look it's at just parallel that. lines of quilting it works just as well so if you if you really feel that you're not ready yet to try your free motion yeah this is done with a walking foot. Yeah. There's a bar on your walking, comes with your, with your walking foot that sits behind, mm -hmm. clips in. Yeah. And you can slide that along to the width of however wide you want your squares to be. Or if you really, really want to, you can draw them on. Yes. And just you can. go straight over the your top of Your fabric them. marker, you know, yeah. whichever fabric marker you prefer. Just if you're going to use the iron off mar fabric marker, just mm -hmm. test it on a scrap first, sure. just to make sure it doesn't leave a ghost mark, because yeah. they can leave ghost marks sometimes, and particularly on reds and darker fabrics. So yeah. just check that, because there's nothing worse. You think, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I haven't, I haven't um, hit the line. You come to iron it off and there's this lovely white line where you've missed. <laughs> and some of them come back, don't they? Like yes, people have said about yeah. using friction pens, but I've seen people say if they've used those and then they've sent their quilt away to a competition, if the temperature's changed on a flight or whatever, Mine's, the friction yeah, pens can come back It's freezing temperatures. It's yeah. freezing temperatures, which actually can work quite well for you if you've okay. ironed your fabric and then didn't want to and your marks disappeared, stick it in the freezer and it'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's useful. That's but useful. if you are going to send but, it somewhere, yeah, if you and it's send going it somewhere yeah. in the in the cargo hold of your car, just uh, of the plane, just be yeah. aware of that. That was oh, Jane, I love this flange with this. Um, I'm going to go into overhead so everyone else can enjoy the beauty that is Jane's flange. Um, talking of which, <laughs> going to change this back. Geraldine over. said earlier, um, lovely close up of your flange, which was nice. <laughs> really <laughs> nice. Uh, now then, you naughty lot. You are. You are a naughty lot. Chi -chi. So yes. Lovely chi -chi. close of your flange, Jane. Um, <laughs> Lizzie Crangle's loving the idea of the flange on a roll. You know, much more simple. Uh, up there thinking, down there for dancing. We are all about that life. Jane, at some point, I really hope you will show us how to make your own flange, you know, with some fabric yes. and some piping yeah, we can do that, definitely. cord, because it can be done. And if you want, I know you like a stripy fabric and, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you've just got an irresistible fabric that you want to use. Or well, like yes, I said earlier, like if you want a velvet that, flange, yeah, that, that you've got to make your own. Your, matches, your, um, matches your fabrics. Yeah. You, know. you want a velvet flange, you've got to make it, haven't yes, you? you? So have. we will at some point get Jane to show us how to do that. So um, this is the, the pre-made flange. It's already sewn quite close to the edge and you've got, um, it's, it's nearly, it's, it's a half, a cent, half an inch really of extra fabric which goes into your seam allowance. 
you need to start approximately halfway along your cushion front but you're not going to sew this bit down here you're going to leave a gap because you're going to have to join it at some point so you want some maneuverability so about two inches away from the corner just pop a pin in just to hold it flat you want the edge of the um, fabric of the flange against the edge of your cushion now I've changed my foot to the zipper foot on okay. my machine. We'll see if we can see your zipper foot. Let me just move everything out of the way so it's not puttering up the front. <laughs> so I've put the zipper foot on. For housekeeping. Now I'm just going to check this because I think I might put it on the wrong side. No, I've got it on the right side. So I've got it so that it's on the left, left hand side. Because let me just take it off. Not all machines have this, but some machines have it so that you can either have it on the left hand side, let's take it off, the left hand side there or the right hand side there, and yes. that will determine on which side this part of the foot sits. Yes. So I'm having it on the left hand side. Just put that back on. So that when I put my flange leads against my quilt, that needle is sitting as close really as it can get to the piping cord inside. Beautiful. So, stitch, stitch, I am put. very excited about this lovely flange. So this is the burgundy we said, didn't we Jane? Yes. So I'm now going to sew against the edge of the piping on, this, on, the, on the flange piping until I get to a quarter of an inch away from the corner and then I'm going to stop and I've just lost my foot. So I'm just <laughs> Lots of uh, sewing machine off. foot, I must point out, not yes, your actual not foot. Not my real foot. I don't know where the grippy stuff's gone that was underneath. No. You had a grippy mat, it's moved. It's moved. Let's find it. So we'll just. Jane, honestly, I'm gonna be I'm gonna tell you now, it's silly. It's silly, it really is, but I have like proper butterflies in my tummy because I'm so excited watching <laughs> you do this. I have uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of a reverse <laughs> stitch just to um, okay strengthen that corner slightly. I'm taking it out from under the machine, I've cut the thread. Yep. I am going to take this flange and I'm going to bend it so it runs at Is a right angle. Yeah. If I pull that up, it's running at a right angle like that. And this part of the fabric here is against the edge of my quilt. Oh, of my, you that I'm going to say quilt. It's my cushion front. Yes. I'm, you'll find me saying quilt. Because you've quilted it. Because I quilted Because you it. quilt a lot. <laughs> So it sits like that. Now you're going to look at that and you're going to say, well, you've got this and it's all rolled up. You just snip into it. Now I'm yes. just going to put a pin in there to hold it, just so that it doesn't move. Now if I've got it in the right yes. position. So yeah. I'm going to snip into that corner, up at just the fabric. Yeah, not your actual Not piping. the actual piping. And you might have to just do it in little snips to get it. There. You need and some of those see, micro snip scissors. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> Natasha did a lovely um, tutorial. So you and can see that that does that. Now, oh, that would that. probably be enough, but I just like to take it into oh, the corner. I can see. It suddenly sits nicely. Just to, to give it a bit more. There is a heads up needed, actually. Those micro tip embroidery scissors I've just mentioned, which are really handy for snipping in little tiny areas. Natasha did a demo on Monday. Um, with a brand new pattern to go with and we have very 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 limited stock of those scissors now they have nearly all gone so that's now just pulled that fabric apart so that then I can just start again from that corner beautiful and you do that you might want to pin the flange to the edge of your cushion front mm -hmm. whatever makes you feel comfortable but you're going to start up against that corner you might be sewing over the bit that you've cut and that's okay. And I'm just going to do a reverse stitch in that corner just to strengthen it slightly. And then I'm going to carry on sewing down as close as I can get to the edge of that piping. Now I'm doing this in um, cream thread because that's on what's on my machine. I would match your thread to your flange. Yes because it, it will show, mm -hmm. so you don't really want it to show, if that makes sense. 
No, it perfectly makes sense, Jane. You know, we do always say in the patterns, don't we, to have a matching thread. Yeah. Um, so I'm stopping. But we use a inch, contrast so you can see. Quarter inch away. Just a reverse stitch. I'm just manipulating the, the cording underneath, pushing my thumb in and bringing it round so it's at a right angle. It almost forms a mitre, but not quite. I'll just pop a pin in there while I snip into the into the fabric on the edge, not into the piping core, just into the fabric on the edge. Same as you did on that first corner. Yeah. Yeah. And we basically we go round and we do all four corners the same way, and then I'll show you how I join it. And that lies nice and flat now. Just might need just to snip that a little bit more. I have popped those uh, little scissors into today's collection for those who uh, saw that demo on Monday and thought, oh yeah, I'll grab those at the weekend. Can't always promise they'll still be around. They do go quickly, don't they? And of course, we that stock is light. Once it's gone, it's gone. It isn't is. We it? really can't get any more of those, unfortunately. Um, well, we probably could, but we probably have to get them at that price. Oh, definitely we? not at the price we've got them at, no. Jenny's saying that she doesn't like doing free motion, Jane, but she does love some ruler quilting. Yes, yeah, um, your rulers, you know, your quilting rulers would make beautiful. Again, it's a lovely way to practice making a cushion front. Fabulous, really fabulous. And Geraldine says she's been scared of doing free motion since she started quilting six years ago, but she's telling me to go for it. I mean, I'm four years in, so I really yeah. ought to. I think the trouble is you learn to do your patchwork and you spend a lot of time making sure your points are accurate and you've got an accurate seam and then you've got quite a large quilt top and you think oh gosh I've got to quilt this now how am I going to manage this on my domestic machine and you really don't want to spoil your quilt you're not going to spoil your quilt no. um, the thing I find is, and, I, and I, I've done some classes with um, young sewers. Now, young sewers have got no fear. They just you tell them to do, you tell them to do something, and they do it straight away. They don't question it. They don't go, "Oh, is this good enough?" I find this like young fine? drivers as well. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> slightly different with young drivers. But young sewers, yeah, they just do it. Crack on. They just get on mm -hmm. with it and do it. And I think sometimes as grown-ups we're always a little bit worried about yeah. what other people might say. My mum and I went to a painting class years ago. We went to this fabulous painting class, this wonderful chap. Um, I'd have been similar age to Meg now, so late teens. Yeah. And my mum would have been similar age to me. And um, we sat there, it was a watercolour class, Jane. Yes. And he came around to look what everyone was doing. Now my mum is a very precise person, I am as well. But with this particular class, I'd watched him and everything was very fluid with the watercolour. You'd really yes. got to sort of, you know, just let it flow. Um, and so I was doing this and she was getting quite cross and he came round and he said, oh, marvellous, bravo. And my mum said, well, mine doesn't look like that. It's not fair. And he watched her and he said, well, that's because you're being too precise. He said, and he got hold of her arm and he said, you need to paint with more abandon, Edwina. More <laughs> abandon, paint with gay abandon like this. <laughs> and he was totally right. Yeah. It, you just have it. to have that flow to it. It's so important. But I'm going to go back to uh, <coughs> close up now because uh, watching you sew is very, very hypnotic. Um, um, Free yeah. motion in particular, watching you free motion, Jane, is one of my favourite things to do. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It does, I, I've, you should just sell videos of that because it just, it's very relaxing. It is very relaxing. Jenny Totterdale says she, she watched a free motion video and the lady said, ease and ends and gingerbread men. So actually, yeah, those yeah. twirly whirlies and yeah. the gingerbread men shape, it, I understand that, yeah. that makes sense. It does. Quite like that. That's lovely, it's a lovely way of doing it. And if you're a doodler, if you doodle, you know, whenever you've got a spare moment, if you, you know, on a conversation or you, your mind's wandering off somewhere I and mean, you doodle, you'll probably find that you find free motion quilting quite straightforward. It's that sort of, you're just making up a pattern as you go. There's no, there's no conformity to it. No, quite. Uh, Geraldine's asking, is putting a flange in a bit like doing binding? It is. Um, it's very similar. The only difference is it is going inside the seam rather than like you're binding. When you're binding a quilt, you do it over the top, don't yes. you? 
So yeah, we're going to go we're going to go through the binding in a in another show. It's just taking you time and getting it yeah exactly where it needs to be, isn't it? So I've come to the final side now, and again I'm only going to sew a couple of inches. I'm going to put my pin in there. That's where I'm going to stop. So that I've got quite a long piece left over. I've said in the in the instructions two meters of. Um, flange piping that gives, gives you that bit of maneuverability if you're making a bigger cushion like if you were making a 20 inch cushion I yeah. get two and a half meters you don't want to scrimp on your flange you just want to have that little bit of extra I want yeah. to say to play with but uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> probably not the best Jane terminology when you use it from you, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Use when you play it, use your That's plans. going on the board. <laughs> um, I have got a board <laughs> at the back, <laughs> at the back of the warehouse, <laughs> and so far every quote on there has been from our great leader. Uh, Natasha has yes. said something beautiful, and I've put it on there for everyone to chortle at if they're yes. having a bad day. That's going on there, Jane. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. So we want to have now. We've got two pieces here. We want to have about two inches, inch and a half from this side here and the same from this side. It doesn't matter with this side because you've got all this extra. Place that down on your cushion so it's lying flat against the edge and just pop your pin in along there. So it's uh -huh. extra Beautiful. and you want the same, line that up and then you want to put that up against the edge there and pop your pin in there. Yeah. A lot of pushing things together on this. So, like with like with your binding, you've yeah. got to make sure there's that overlappy bit. So, you're just going to snip that now, so that's the same length as that piece there. Lovely. Okay. So you've got these two pieces here. Now, I didn't bring the unpicker in with me. That's all right. We'll have one somewhere here. Um, if not, I can just use a pin. Auntie Lizzie is asking how the grippy mat has moved. Um, that will be because someone's hoovered and moved the grippy mat, possibly gone and cleaned it because it was dusty and not put it back. Yeah. Um, just, you know, in the interest of solving the case for everybody who's wondering about that themselves. Geraldine says, oh, Jane, you are fab. Everything <laughs> is getting a flange now. I've been scared of doing that as well. Oh, thank you, Geraldine. Geraldine's also pointed so, out that Natasha might have pilfered said grippy mat and taken it to her house. This it's is possible. possible. It's very possible. <laughs> if she has, she needs to replace it. We're finding a lot of things have suddenly disappeared. We're so used <laughs> to sharing everything in it's here. It's almost like they're hers. Yeah, anybody thinks she owned the place, I, I don't know. know what she's thinking. Um, <laughs> so you can see here, I'm unpicking the sewing that is holding the, the fabric against that piping. I'm picking up to that pin on both sides of this um, piped flange so that the fabric is now loose and away. Ah, the child has appeared. Good morning, almost afternoon, Jane and Mum. Oh. Morning, PT. Morning. Mini PT. Mini PT. So that's un unpicked now so that this is loose. So we're going to take those um, pins out of it where it's holding it, but we're going to keep the pins in position just so that we've got a marker so we know where we are. Let's turn that one around so I don't get my stick my fingers with it. This one I'm going to push the, the fabric back to expose the cord and I'm going to do the same with the left hand side as well. Lovely. Take the pins out now actually. Yeah don't 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 stab yourself with the pins. And so no, we've got no dinosaur plasters left. You're just going to push them back out of the way so that you can see your cord. Making sure that it's still lying flat and it's not got any extra on it. Lie those two pieces of exposed cord up and just snip them somewhere between in the middle against each other like that. That's so, the moment Jane. Yeah. <gasps> so those two pieces of cord now butt up to each other. That's all right. So we're going to take a piece of thread and we're just going to sew those. Now it gets messy. It doesn't matter. It's going to be ex it's going to be um, inside anyway. But you're just going to sew these two ends together, and it's really just to hold them so they don't move around. So 
And this doesn't need to be beautiful. It no, just needs to be functional. No, it's not going to be seen. It's just really is. Keeping it together. When I first um, learned how to do this, I was using piping cord. Now, piping mm -hmm. cord is usually put together in sort of three strands. Okay. And you can unravel it and twist it back together. Ooh, clever. You can't really do that with this cord in because it's got multi multiple pieces. We do need to see the witchery that is, Jane. When, when, you make, when you make some flange for us, flange piping, yeah, you we'll need to that. show us how that happens because that, to me, is a bit of witchcraft right there. So you would just, I'm going to... You would just keep going round your cord and just in the one side and through the other, just holding those yep. together. And then what you can do once you've done that as well, because you can see it's starting to, th to fray a bit, you can just take your thread and wrap it around just to hold, yeah. hold those stray ends in. Lovely. And again, you'll do this a little bit more thoroughly than I'm doing it. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. Absolutely. Um, it will look neater than that. For speed, not beauty right now. Yeah, and I think in the, the instructions which I floated across the floor there, <laughs> you can oh, see I'm going to go get them for you, neater. darling. <laughs> and and you've yeah, done that in a contrast thread as well, just so that everybody yeah, can, you can see, see in the what they're looking at. Please don't ask me for a camera angle change right now, Jane. I'm not there. No. <laughs> not there. I'm not so there. you can just do that and you can tie it off and, and make it. And as I say, okay. it doesn't have to be pretty. It's just literally to hold the two pieces together. This one here. Woo, there. there we are. You can see it on that. Just hold them together, hold them flat. So once you've done that, you'll bring this piece on the right hand side, that piece of fabric, you'll bring that back. So it covers over your piping cord. And this piece here, you might find that when you pull that back over, it's it's still a little bit wide and it pushes it. So you can always trim it so it sits flat. I'm going to take that little piece off there. So it sits flat against that edge there. Now this piece here, once you've pulled it back and you notice it's lying flat, just take the inside of it, pull it back and just fold that over at a 45 degree angle. Like that. It creases nicely, this, this um, cord does. And then lie that over the top, push it underneath, and make sure that it's lying flat against your cushion edge. You might need to pull it down a little bit so that it doesn't ruckle. And then just pin it in place. And then you can go back to where you finished and carry on sewing past where you started, just a little bit with your zipper foot. Beautiful. Jane, we've got lots of lovely comments from our YouTubers, so I'll have a little read oh, of those in a nice. second. Um, Vicky's missed the last almost hour with some pesky work calls. <laughs> Geraldine's told us we better behave now, children are watching. Uh, nice. <clears throat> you've not met my daughter. That's she can hold her own. Yeah, she's... <laughs> <laughs> she's a chip off the old block, is her? She is indeed. Heather says that that's brilliant, Jane. She's always struggled with her flange ends. Yeah. Don't want to be struggling with your flange ends. No, it's nope. not what you want. Jane has got a handle on the flange. We're all good. <laughs> um, YouTube, however, we have lots and lots of lovely comments. So we have Diane saying, morning, wahoo, it's Jane Day. I always learn so much from her. Oh, bless you. Yes, you do, because right. she is our stitchy witch. Did I waft my... Um, Push well, some backing over there as well. <laughs> Bye, Jane. Where's that gone? Oh, it's there. <laughs> you have, haven't you? Yeah, Drops, just just wafted everything onto the floor well, today. Pushed it. Um, but yes, yeah, she says she always learned lots from you, so that's lovely. Lots that's of hellos. Nice to know. Uh, Diane says, my bank balance is very pleased I don't live in England and you don't send to Australia. <coughs> I always want so many half me to heavens. Uh, Diane, we're ever so sorry. But yes, international. It's it's a it's tricky just thing for us. Complicated a tax system and the customs and Absolutely. everything else. It's crazy. Having said that, our instructions we put as many as we can into digital format. If they're not available in digital format, it's normally because there's a template that we can't put in on a on a digital download. These ones are available digitally, so you can download the patterns, and that gives us some support as well, which we really appreciate. Um, because we are a tiny little business here, yeah. you know, and we love bringing you the shows. Yeah, we love bringing you the shows. But you know, 
we have overheads and all of that. Yeah. And those of you that do you choose have to, to keep buy me from us into the manner in which I'm accustomed. I know, right? Yeah. Nice to have a job, hey? <laughs> yes. Nice to have a job and be able to be here and do this for you. I so do for it those for of you, I'm not, not going to lie, but don't tell no. Natasha that. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> We get so many lovely emails every week um, and we've had some gorgeous ones e even in the last few days. Yeah. But you know, some do say I, I buy from you because I want to keep you on the screen in front yes. of me because I feel like I've got company and I don't feel alone when you're on and, and it means the world to us. We get all teary um, but we do appreciate you guys we as do. much as you appreciate Everything us. Everything that you do for us Thank is you. wonderful. Um, I'm now pinning the backing. I'd better show that, Jane. Right sides together. So that's the front of my um, quilted cushion front. And this is the backing. So it's right sides together. I've Lovely. pinned the first one on and then I'm pinning the next one on and making sure that I've got my hems facing into the middle. Um, you'll be able to feel your piping cord underneath. So you can just make sure that you're um, just pinning around that. And then it really is a case of sewing around it with your zipper foot on still so you can get as close as you can to the edge brilliant um and we'll quickly whiz that round talk among yourselves do you know do that. zipper foots aren't just for zips no sometimes when you want to get really close on something they They're are very perfect handy for your indeed of piping. but if you have got a raised element somewhere and you need to stitch really close to it that's when you need your zipper foot yeah. it is your friend Debbie says, good morning. I always panic when it's not straight, but it seems to look okay in the end. Yes. You and me yeah. both. Um, she also says, I'll be putting a flange on all my cushions in the future now. And Diane says, oh my goodness, you've just blown my mind with your flange around the corner trick. Watch out, couch, you're about to get new cushions. <laughs> lovely. I mean, that's nice, isn't that's it? That's a lovely thing to say. Seriously, Jane, you have upgraded everyone's cushions for them today. This is a proper master class. Oh, lots of praise for you. You're truly brilliant with your demos, Jane. Thank you. We know this. This is why we keep her. What you don't <laughs> see is that when she's not on air, we chain her. She can't leave. <laughs> chain to the work dock. But yeah, hopefully this will stop anyone having fear of the flange, Jane. Absolutely. We don't want flange fear in our lives. No, it doesn't. It doesn't do you any good. No. You just take be that careful flange. as you're going round here because obviously oh, you're yes. sewing. You've got your two layers of the flange piping. You've got your three layers of your quilt, your quilt front, and you've got your backing layer. Now you can't work with a walking foot and your piping. So the answer is to go as slowly as possible and just keep your fabric as tight as you can, so using Jane, your hands to smooth it out because yeah. it will walk. Now. If it does, don't panic, you can trim it back. As I've said before, nobody but you knows that it was a bit baggy and caused sure. wrinkles. What you don't want to do is to have wrinkles in it. So if you get to the corner and it's, I don't know, quarter of an inch overhang, that doesn't matter, you can trim that back. So Jane, on those corners where you've placed that flange, you've got a curve there. Yes. You're following the curve am, of the flange rather than... I am than just keeping the edge of my zipper foot against yep. the edge of my flange. Great. And following it round rather than squaring off onto no, those corners I think and following the edges. You can of the square it if you want to, but I think you'll get a nicer finish yes. if you if you just. And it's only a very gentle curve. Mm -hmm. You're not going to end up with a round cushion. No. But it just just and you may want to just do reverse stitch around the corner just to strengthen that corner, but I don't think you really need to. I think it will be fine. I can't wait to see some of the photos of these cushions people are going to be creating. Please, please, please do share. Oh yes, do on share. On our Community Women's. Makes page. Yeah, absolutely. And these bundles, like I say, today's bundles, I have put them together with a substantial discount on them. And that is just for today. So if you like the duos that Jane has so lovingly put together, they are $13.99 for two half meters of Moda designer fabric. That should be £15.90. $13.99 for a metre of Moda? Yes. I know, Jane. As they say, you're having a laugh. <laughs> I am having a laugh, Jane. I am, I am. That's absolutely it. I don't it. think you get that price for Moda anywhere. 
particularly, you know, as the way the markets and everything Absolutely are at the moment. Absolutely right. And if you do want to buy multiples, we will cut those to order. So if you buy two units, it'll be two times a metre. If you buy three, it'll be two times a metre and a half. That's how it'll go. I have got a little tuck in my um, backing there. You can see as it's pushed it round. Ooh. But can we see on the It's going overhead? to go, it'll go into the seam allowance, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Oh, we're going to go. trim the corners off now, again, just to reduce the bulk. Now, take care that you don't go right into your stitching, oh. so it really is a. How much would you be oh, sweary, Mary, cry, if you did? Wouldn't you? Just yeah, cry. you'd be so cross. It's better to cut off a little bit and then go back and cut off a yes. bit more if you feel that it's still a bit bulky. Take those pins out and then just cut this raggedy one off. I'm just going to trim that there and I'm just going to cut that down there. And that's just where the fabric's moved. It's just moved, it's and stretched it's because it's so many layers and yeah. it's pushing it down. If you've got um, a machine like this one, actually, you can reduce the um, pressure on it. It's got the pressure foot, um, the smart feed. You can reduce the pressure on it so you can lift the foot slightly so it's a little bit like walking foot. Oh fabulous. So then you just literally pull Are it Are you through. going to have a ta-da moment Jane? This is where it all falls apart. No. <laughs> <laughs> Shush Jane, everyone's saying how amazing this has been <laughs> and what a brilliant demo and what they've learned. And You're not going to have anything you just push the corners now. out. In yes. the push the corners out in the corners. Yeah. Not English. There and you just go. use your finger. Just you don't need a special finger. tool. You, don't, you could use the edge of your scissors, but if you do, just be careful that you yeah. don't poke through the fabric. Yeah, don't poke through the fabric. Because it's, a be. it's got a slight curve in it, the, the pressure of your finger is going to be enough just to push those corners out. That's lovely. And there you go. That yeah, who the... wants to buy these and have them on their, uh, on their sofa? That looks lovely, <laughs> or on their it? bed. Yeah, there you are. Gorgeous. We go into the overhead and we can have a good look. And you she can says, see how that sits in. Please switch. Everyone can see me pressing the button now. You can, I can, I can, <laughs> this is why I say there we are. to use the um, same colour thread. Because sometimes oh, should we go close up if I can you'll, see, you'll see your thread. Where yes. you've sewn it to your, your cushion front, it might not have got yes. quite close enough in your seam allowance. So that's why I say you just use the same colour thread and then that'll give you a nicer finish. Yes. But that's on the back. That's on the back and nobody's going to And if you do use the same colour thread, it wouldn't be it noticeable wouldn't show, it wouldn't at, show all. at all. No. no, it wouldn't be. Oh, Jane. So there Fabulous. you go. Fabulous. And um, piped edge. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the fabrics are beautiful. You've They're done a lovely job with them. They're really pretty fabrics. But similarly, if you want to get the instructions and, you know, buy yourself some fabulous cave or whatever, there the are instructions are concentrating more on putting the yes. um, piping on. They do tell you how to make that cushion front, but mm -hmm. that's just a um, serving suggestion, yes. isn't it? And just because today we've used these fabrics and these flanged pipings doesn't mean that we can't help you put fabrics together for your own cushions. If you've seen fabrics that you like and you're not sure which colour of flanged piping will look best, you know, pop one in the basket and purchase it and then put a note on the notes part of your order to say, can you please check this and if there's a better one, we'll substitute it. We can do that for you. We will happily do um, that for you. Or if you want to just check ahead of time, then you can just email us at info at natashamakes.com and say, I'm looking at this fabric and this fabric, which flange or, or which contrast fabric would you put with it? You know, Jane loves a job like that. I do. I do. It's, you know, it's a hardship, isn't it? Having it is to shop awful. for somebody else awful. and help them spend their money. Really, yeah. really, really big hardship. A terrible thing to have to do. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us today. Um, tomorrow, being Thursday, A, we have the Half Me to Heavens. They go live at midnight. We've already mentioned those. Fastest finger first on a few of them because there's not many of yeah. them. Um, later today, I'm going to see if we can get some more bolt ends up, but I have loaded some into today's collection. So again, once those are gone, they're gone. They're fabric clearance and that's just how it is uh, but tomorrow tomorrow at 6 30 p.m we have myself and john on um, that's our third show of our tilda series the embroidery flower quilt we're lovingly calling that gin o'clock with Gemma and john it's lovely i've got a nice rhubarb gin i shall be having a little glass of tomorrow <laughs> nice. watching that um and yes you know join us there we'll be using quilters grid and there's lots of technique in that so it's not just specifically for those who have bought that project
Lots of hints and tips, I should imagine. I mean, Joel. Definitely. Yeah. Friday, SJ's newsletter will be coming out. If you're not registered for that, then please do sign up because you're missing out. Um, and then it's next week, and we've got that there, Natasha, for two live shows, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. And you're back Wednesday, Jane. I am. As always. I think I've got a lovely children's quilt book, haven't I, next oh, Wednesday? Oh, we've got some beautiful things Gorgeous in the pipe fabrics. Line. But yes, lovely. to all of those of you who are going to go off and flange all your cushions now, uh, enjoy. Please do <laughs> share your pictures with us. Um, and yeah, thank you for your ongoing love and support. We very much appreciate it. We don't certainly we, do, absolutely. Um, but yeah, we will see you again and on. Take care, bye lots bye. of love and bye-bye. <laughs>